we're here with Welcome to the Show. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> and the Rick A. Show with uh, E. He's our baseball. I have a specialist, a baseball specialist on my show. Oh, shit. And nice. it's E. Man. And every time we have to go, like off season, playoffs, World Series, he'll be on for us. Yeah, I know. So that's my little insider. <laughs> we're here. Uh, we're here. I don't want to blow up his spot, but when I say my sources, Uh-oh. it's in this table somewhere, my sources. Uh oh. So we finally did a joint podcast, little background. Me and Manny actually went to elementary school together. And middle uh, school. And, and middle school. Uh, shout out to Incarnation. Word. Class of 98 again, strikes again. Let's go. Because I did the BB interview, and that was because <laughs> of Michelle. Uh, and I get a lot of love from our classmates, so thank you for that. Um, Manny's here. LA is here. Or CT. Call me CT. I like the fact that he wore his Boston hat. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm we a have some, some good diversity in here. <laughs> Do I need to lean in this country? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> no the audio's, the audio's yeah. beautiful, so right, right. it's... No, no, respect. You, you got to respect the champs, man. It doesn't matter who, who you are, but here, I key where everybody is... I'm going to represent a Latino, a Mexicano. <laughs> and I got my little Mets hat. You know, DR is here too. Yeah. So We're representing all the teams. Everybody's welcome, man. Everybody's welcome because we all love baseball. So here's Thank a quick you. here's a quick question. I know this I'm hijacking this shit right now. Go no, for, go, go ahead. <laughs> this is a, a cross pot. So you're, you're, yeah. you're actually the host of this shit right now. So, so CT. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Manny. Since you're wearing the Red Sox hat, oh, this is a question that I've had. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a lot of guys, CT oh, you, lives in Jersey. Okay, but he did. He was born in Manhattan, like we were in the Heights, in on Bennett Avenue. And um, what is it about Dominicans? I know that Pedro Martinez, Manny Ramirez, Big Poppy, Big Poppy, Big Poppy. but in the Heights, you're a mile away from Yankee Stadium, and you see a whole bunch of people rocking Red Sox hats. Like, doesn't that seem kind of weird? It does it to me because our people tend to gravitate towards like their players. Yeah. So for this year, you will see a lot of. San Diego Padre hats and a lot of maybe a few a lot more New York Mets hats because Cano is it depends on like we have those big big players and I think Manny was one of them especially he's from the Heights so he signs that big deal with the Red Sox it was 169 you know like yeah it was an 01 I forgot it was 160 yeah it was a huge contract and he signs over there so everybody's like yo Red Sox this is how First of all, and I hate when people say I always been a big Poppy fan. Don't give me that shit. No. Because when he was in the Twins, <laughs> you didn't know him. You didn't. You know. didn't know who he was. No, no. Actually, the Twins made a big mistake. They didn't know. But uh, actually, Manny, that was a great question, and I want to hear from CT. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I want to know what drove him to the Red no, Sox. No. That's my. That's my. <laughs> it's not unique, as Manny said. There is a lot of people who did it. I know. I have. We have other family members with Red Sox, and I do want to get. Why, like, and it's not just Red Sox sometimes. Like, it's so dry. Th- there's right? a phrase amongst us Dominicanos. I mean, I don't know if, if you guys hear it, but in our family, most of our family members aren't Yankees fans. And and I know we're immigrants from the from DR and stuff, but his father's the only one that likes the Yankees. Other than that, and my dad, actually. Um, uh, my yeah. uncle likes the Mets. Alexi likes anybody that's not the Yankees. So there's a yeah. phrase called anti-Yankee that they say is in some Spanish. Yeah, right? that definitely is in our household. Just too. completely yeah, anything, so. anybody but the Yankees. I think Eman and AJ are the only Yankee fans in yeah. our household. Everybody else is like a Mets or a Red Sox fan. Yeah, but it's well, weird. I think, I think the real question is, you know, why, why is, why are both Manny so disconnected from the. Dominican culture. <laughs> Damn. Okay, okay. No, no, that's right. good. Before I, let me just turn this back. I don't want to, don't want to put any. Bad don't worry, CT. No, no, go ahead. Right. I can't remember. Talk remember, to, that, talk Matt, to the people, man. We only got one man in here. I mean, man, nah, I'm only gonna, that's Manny. <laughs> I'm, yeah, and we good. I'm only gonna speak for myself. So I, I've loved playing baseball since since forever, right? Like, like. Since the beginning, I didn't have to be forced to like baseball like my brother did. That's another story. Uh, so when I was a kid, the biggest star for me was Alex Rodriguez, Sammy Sosa, Pedro. Because you're Dominican, you're a kid, you're Dominican, and like you see your Dominican people succeeding, beating up everybody. Like they were the hottest topic back in the day. Vlad, it was just everybody. So many players. Everybody. We, no, we, so we many. killed it. We killed it in the nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, Albert Pools. Part there was a the couple last. of other people, but yeah, we were main, like, All the main right. ones. Rolling there was a couple. So, for me, my favorite Miguel two... Miguel Tejada. Yeah, my favorite two <laughs> players. My favorite two players were Alex Rodriguez, Pedro Martinez. But you never really got to see A-Rod's games as a kid. I saw a lot of Red Sox games. Yeah. 
because my my family likes the Yankees. And I just kind of ran with it. I didn't know that I was... Did you like to oppose the people? Like, you'd be in the living room with your family? And yeah, just because so, everybody there was, like, Yankees, you were like, nah, let's go Red Sox. You, your yeah. mom hates the Yankees. Nah, my mom just goes for anybody who's getting roughed up. Like, if she sees Severino giving up six runs in an inning, yeah. she'll root for Severino. <laughs> she won't admit it, but she'll, she'll do it. But Shout out to Luli. I didn't... I like the Red Sox regardless, but I became obsessed with... Wanting the Yankees to lose because of like the living room crowd being into one team, and you wanted to go against that. So that's just me, though. I'm not speaking for the whole population. No, no. <laughs> actually, CT, you're speaking for a big percent of the population. Not only you guys that were raised here, because like I was, oh, the I, was Republic, I was just born here. I was mainly raised in the DR actually during this time, where we were also a fan. And you had an excellent point. Most games that were televised in DR obviously were in prime time. You never got to see A-Rod in Seattle or Texas. You really only saw Yankees, Red Sox, Mets, and whatever other team like in the middle was playing on the East Coast. And obviously, when Sammy Sosa was during like chasing records, that was they were stopped on regular TV, like in the actual news to put us at bat. But besides that, the the most people in DR were only exposed to the actual teams on the East Coast. So a, a lot of people who liked other teams. And you'll read about it in the paper. The internet wasn't what it was, you know, yeah. like in 98 or 2000 yeah. or whatever. So, yeah, so mainly everybody was going towards, what do I got? The Yankees winning these championships, the wrestlers with these, like, Dominican players dominating, or the Mets, you know, the lovable underdogs or the Cubs. Those yeah. are, like, the four main teams in the DR. Well, yeah. Besides the Dodgers, the Dodgers had a, a big following DR, but for a different reason. The Dodgers were the first team in the Tommy Lasorda. To Tommy, have, Lasorda right? Tommy Lasorda. Not only that, they were the first team to have a Dominican academy down there. Mm-hmm. They were the pioneers of that. That's and awesome. then that that made all the other teams like, wow, what are they doing? They're getting all this talent that's untapped. We got to do this too. So there was like a soft spot for the Dodgers. Even, Even though they were on the West Coast and people didn't see their games like that, there was a soft spot for that. But besides that, everybody was either Yankees, Mets, Red Sox, Cubs, yep. and... A lot of the average population was like anti Yankee. Like, yeah. let's just go against the Yankees because they were the most successful at the time. Yeah. So, my favorite players are Pedro and A Rod. And I, me, it's four of us at the same age, me and Manny. Uh, e Man, because I keep saying Manny. <laughs> and we, would, we can only watch baseball tonight to see Alex we had, or if Seattle was playing New York. Yeah. And when Alex was actually in the Yankees, I was rooting for the Yankees because my favorite player was playing in our city. Yeah. So if the Mets are not in the playoffs, it's not like I'm like, fuck the Yankees. You know, I want New York to win at the end of the day because we're suffering. The Giants are making some horrible moves. Oof. The Knicks have been awful. Ugh. Awful. Oh, yeah. The Rangers haven't won since 94. And the only thing that's like... Keeping New York alive is the New York game. It so, is. And I mean, the Rangers, are, uh, the Islanders, I'm sorry, are doing pretty good this year. But Yeah, but you know, we're not a big we're not. It's big not like a really... Hockey. I've never seen a Dominican on ice good. yet, so <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for that one. Yeah. You know what's weird? I've never seen a Dominican on ice either. But you know in DR, like, uh, you know here they're trying to do things legalizing betting and stuff. So in DR, there's like little sh- shops, like La Banca de Apuesta, Banca, yeah. which is yeah. literally you go to a shop and you can bet like playing the mega millions of the Powerball. And you can bet on sports. And there's like lines on the chalkboard in those spots. Not now. I'm talking about 12 years ago when I used to live in DR. And th- there were Dominicans betting on hockey. <laughs> That's like, funny, man. That is wow. so funny. I, it's I like, man. How would they, like, they don't watch the game. They're you know they don't watch the game. They don't tell about the game. <laughs> they used to, they how do you know who won? Or? They use the... It, or do they use the hockey games as the lotto? You know, no, you they use the that, hockey games. The illegal lottery yeah. here in New York. So the Benito. final score of the, uh, the, Reg, uh, the Reg, Rangers game, that'll be the numbers. No, no, no. The, what they the did is they had all sports on the board. But what they did is like all the sports that were connected through there, they used the lines from Las Vegas. So they used the actual official Vegas lines. They posted on the board. And you actually go, you bet on your teams, and you pay taxes. It's like a normal thing. It's not a big deal down there. But that's how obsessed like Dominicans are with, with like competition yeah, and believe. different things. Like they, they were even doing that on hockey. But same thing, like how you were saying, Rick, like obviously there's a lot of people who want New York teams to, to, to be successful. But like me, like growing up, Except like, the Brooklyn Nets. like I was diverse, not in my, my fandom, but like in my house. Like I had my dad who was literally just 
He just cared about who the Dominican players were. So he didn't have an allegiance to one team. He was all Dominican players, be that the Red Sox or everybody. But then I had my mom, who's a true blue Yankee fan. As a matter of fact, her favorite player forever was Don Mattingly. And that became my favorite player, even though I was so young to even remember yeah. Donnie Baseball. <clears throat> but, like, my favorite player was Don Mattingly, a white guy from the Yankees. Mm-hmm. So that's why I became a fan of the Yankees you more than the actual him, so I don't players. Get that yeah. yeah, for me, it was Paul O'Neill. My father took me to Warrior. a Yankee game in 93. He hit three home runs. And from there, just it was just like, oh, I have to be a Yankee fan. Now. That was your guy. Yeah. Paul. But who knows? What if they had been faced? They faced the California Angels that day. And that, and that, that I think their best play was... Jim Edmonds, Edmonds or some shit like that? Yeah, the time. Oh. Tim Salmon? Tim Salmon or something yeah, Sam- like that. Those are some Mark good Langston. Angels teams, by the way. Garrett Those are some good uh, defensive players in the Sean outfield. Figgins. Yeah. Sean Figgins. Oh, my God. Sean Figgins. He took it easy. He played for like how many years? Like K-Rod. K-Rod as a rookie. K-Rod oh, yeah, as a rookie. Yeah. He was dynamic. As he a was dynamic as a rookie, man. man. The Angels. It's so, hard It's hard not to like the Yankees, like how they are now, though, because they're young. They have... They do what speak on it, Boston Red Sox fan. I'm just saying, I'm just saying as, a, as a fan, as a fan of <clears> baseball, <throat> he likes the Yankees. As a fan of baseball, <laughs> as a fan of baseball, uh, like you you admire guys like Aaron Judge that do things the right way, yeah, and yeah. they're like a new. They're just it's new. It's like a fresh face, and it's, not just you know Judge, the Yankees though. and the Red Sox. Oh, well, like Didi's another likable. Didi's guy. the guy yeah. for me. Didi's like, like a Yankee. He's, I don't, I don't know what it is about him specifically as a person. Uh, Emmanuel knows him personally, but Didi is a really nice guy. Nah, he's a great guy. And he's just like, you could tell he plays his tail yeah. off. You know, we're talking about those old Yankees. My guys were Posada, Bernie. I love to watch those. O'Neal was one of my he's guys. He's going to be Coney. missed uh, for these months that he's out. He's missed there. So those were, I think you mentioned Judge. Yeah, Judge is great. And that's what. America loves um, because he's tall, young guy, strong, muscular, plays for the biggest organization in the world. One of the best players in baseball. One of the best players? Yeah. <laughs> I, he's I, humble. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, he's we'll, humble. We'll have an argument. I'm going to tell you why I said judge. I'm going to tell you why I said judge because you become one of the best talents in your sport or the mm-hmm. best at anything and he's still humble enough to like... Yeah, yeah. I like do that normal, about Do normal him. people shit. So yeah. Yeah. That's why I like judge. Yeah. I just don't like the comparison to Derek G. First of all, Jeter, That's as a human job. being, was not the greatest person in the world. And I think Aaron Judge is completely different. And the reason why it is, uh, you, with your statement, I completely agree with it. There's not one Yankee that you look on the, the team, the players, the roster, not the front office, that you look at and you'd be like, oh, I don't like this guy. Yeah. Glaber. They're all like Didi. You know? Even Giancarlo. I uh, love Giancarlo G- Stanton. Gary Sanchez, though, like. He's why, why does my man get so much flag? I know. <laughs> Help me out here. Always, have you heard that, man? I always hear that yeah, that yeah, Gary and Giancarlo are two of the players that get more. They get people books. get annoyed. People get annoyed at Giancarlo because Giancarlo got paid. bats funny and he has that giant contract. It's because he got paid. Yeah, yeah. And with Gary, it's That's because game, it's because you don't see the hustle there. But you didn't see the hustle with Manny Ramirez. And Manny Ramirez or is one of the greatest hitters Legit. of all time. You know what I mean? But you, but you're the catcher. You're the catcher. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like when you and I don't know. He just has so much raw talent all, that I don't understand when Yankee it's fans too are easy like for him. It's it's just like Cano. Cano yeah. feels one of those easy, balls. Yeah. It's just yeah, but you, not Cano, man. Cano is something else. <laughs> <laughs> he I never, think about I never, Manny. He's I just never, a Manny Ramirez. If Manny Ramirez would have played. Hard. Imagine Manny Ramirez with A Rod's work ethic. The player. No. Well, I heard you didn't even have I to go that far. I, I can't confirm. I can't confirm. You're a Red Sox fan, right? Yeah. And Manny Ramirez is one of the most talented people I've ever saw play. Can you imagine? And I'm gonna say, there's a Red Sox player that I hate's a bad word. I don't like hate. I don't like using that word. There's a Red Sox player that I don't like that much. Pedroia. But he is the hardest working player I've seen, Pedroia. and it's Dustin Pedroia. Can you imagine? Dustin Pedroia is like it's like Manny Ramirez's talent. Of those faces, man. No, no, Dustin Pedroia has no talent. He's all hard work. Can you imagine Dustin Pedroia's work MVP, ethic? former MVP? Could you imagine him in Manny Ramirez's talent? Like I get you, but let me just and wow. I can't and I can't confirm this because I wasn't there when the conversation took place. My brother played in DR for an entire year. He tried to get signed. He worked with some professional coaches, and they all vouched for Manny Ramirez as being the one of the hardest worker. Well, for hitting and with his his hitting approach, yeah, and how he's like the smartest hitter and shit. That's why I don't really like pay attention to when they get caught with with stuff. 
Because usually the guys that take stuff are working their ass off to make That's That was going to be my next point. Yeah. You know, and the, one of the people that's credited with being one of the hardest working baseball players, Alex Rodriguez, went to Biogenesis because Manny Ramirez went there first. He went to Tony Bosch and he said, I want the same shit so, you're giving Manny Ramirez. So, so, can you repeat that again? I mean, so I people get on me for protecting con- A-Rod. I can't confirm, I'm just saying. I can't confirm. I agree that Manny Ramirez is maybe like kind of dumb and whilst his... Manny being man, his, Manny his, uh, being taking Manny. a leak lost in the green focus, monster, lost his focus. having the head. Well, in terms on. of the story, yeah. I'm going to say that I do not agree. I can't condone any like use of oh, any <laughs> substance. Who's doing but, all, who wasn't and who was but, exactly? Just, but yeah. uh, besides that, uh, even be- before that, there, there's actual talent involved. Like yeah. I can use something, and I'm still not going to make it. Like perfect example is the Giambi brothers. Uh, Jason was a uh, great talent, and Jeremy was a terrible player. They both lose <laughs> the a lot of stuff. Shout out to <laughs> and one, shout out to one of them Jeremy was, Giambi. <laughs> no, one of them was uh, uh, had a great career. The one that actually had a lot of talent, and the other one who used as much or even maybe more stuff, unconfirmed, didn't have a good career. The greatest and it's ball he didn't player have of all time. Enough said. talent. Yeah. Right. So you but, need hand-eye coordination. But we're talking about balls. like bad. Before we get into the bonds topic, I just wanted to give a shout out again. Respecting the Red Sox, the, the Red Sox, <laughs> the Wood Champs. They're not that hateable as they used to be. He, I love, yeah, Mo- I, I, love Mo- you know I love Mookie Betts, Betts, by the way. Mookie Betts, man. And, exactly. I love go wrong with that. Half of the team that they have, half of the team that they have is homegrown. It's like they, they, they scouted, they developed these yeah. players. And including their best player, in my opinion, Mookie Betts. It's, he's their Aaron Judge. He, it, it, it's not like, you know... These high price, but players. I think, I they, think they, the both teams mirror each other yeah. actually. Because yes. if you say Aaron Judge so and Mookie Betts, Betts then you can also say a Giancarlo Stanton and JD Martinez. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So and you can say Aaron Hicks and JBJ. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, they both although JBJ is way better defensively. But. You could you could say you could say you could say and, uh, and uh, Benintendi. Benintendi. Yeah, young Benintendi's love that. Kid. But you know, I think they, Bogarts took. You know that I don't want to say he looks like he needs to play yeah. for Boston. That's that's he's like he does he looks love like that he kid. Fits the team. Like but you know that yeah. Benin- 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 Nintendo. <laughs> you guys know that the Yankees turned down multiple offers to for a trade for Chris Sale because in those yeah. trade offers, a, prospects they wanted the whole. Thing. No, no, they they wanted a combination of either Judge Sanchez or Severino. Like right. two of those three had to be in the deal. So, so the Yankees said no trades. We were in the off season. We're doing this special. Combined podcast because of everything that's happening in the offseason and leading into opening day special. So speaking of trades, you just brought that up. So the Yankees made a very interesting trade in the offseason where they sent uh, Sheffield to uh, Seattle Seattle for for James Paxton. Now, let's rewind the clock. This is a Mets fan speaking to the Yankees, by the way. In July, uh, Miguel Andujar, Sheffield, and I think it was Frazier. Was the third piece that was the Mets counter offer to the Yankees for who? For Jacob Degrom. So wow, pick your poison. Do you want? I don't remember that. The best. The, so there was about two weeks where Wait, they were going back and forth. Confirm that that's who they put on the table. That's the who the Mets wanted back in return for Degrom. Oh okay. The Yankees were not willing to part with Sheffield, not in Duhar with Sheffield. So we go to the offseason. They make that trade. I had Emmanuel on here uh, for the playoffs. He said that was one of, not the playoffs, maybe some. Yeah, it was for the, the, the day before the playoffs. The day before the first Yankees Red Sox. And that's when the trade happened? No, no, that's He not called the, the Red Sox happened. winning the World Series, by the way. Thank you. I called the two, but. But piece by piece. Like, I we did a, we really did a breakdown. <laughs> and then we spoke about that trade. Like, and I, and I criticized the Yankees for making that trade specifically. And for also the way they took a stance in the offseason, as if we're the New York Yankees, not to, it's bad because I'm a Mets fan. We're the New York Yankees. Why should we sign you? That's the approach they took with free agents. And they struck out big time. Mm -hmm. So they didn't get Manny Machado. He ends up going to San Diego. You want it? You think they should have gotten him? I think they should have shelled out the money for him. Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) They were like, we don't get Manny Machado. We're going to wait for Nolan. What happens a God. couple weeks later? He's got a point. Extended. He's got a point. Uh, all right, Nolan's gone. We'll hold out for Trout because they were going to compete with Philly to get Trout. What happens? Extension. So there, there's a big hole there. You know, they got James Paxson. That's nice. You know, that's a nice little 
They signed Gio Gonzalez. Yeah. To a minor league deal. Minor league deal. And you got Sevi. Is, is, is Sevi gonna play in the beginning of the year? Right, no, no, right. he's gonna. Is he's CC get, gonna play? No, no, not the first month. Okay, so <laughs> they're they're scheduled to be available. Maybe Let's Rick, keep going. Keep going. Let's Rick. talk off season. <laughs> but the schedule's weak the first month. So keep going, Rick. Let's, Let's talk off. Now historically, the they, Yankees they, they, are yeah, god awful in April. Say, can I just say that the Yankees split the season with the Orioles last year? I think. No, no, at the beginning they were down, but they ended up being uh, above 500. No, they never, really? historically, they've never yeah. been good in April. Never. They always pick it up, like, end of May, June, July. It's a new year. Um, <clears throat> I just think, and I made this prediction before, people have asked me for my opinion. I said, they get to the ALCS, or they don't even make it that far. That's as far as they get. This year? I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit nervous now because that was kind of my prediction as well. I didn't go as far as ALCS, but now that two people are thinking the same, it kind of makes me think that I might be wrong in this. No, no, no. I think, but I agree with you. There's, I, there's, there's some holes. No, um, with the offseason, I believe there's different types of factors. Obviously, if they didn't trade Miguel and Duhar for a, a deal involving Jake DeGrom. The guy they don't want, by the way. Or, or, or Corey Kluber. That means that they were not really ever 100% serious in Manny Machado. I actually believe that they had a choice that they were going to make. That it's a, it was a, either going to be Giancarlo Stanton, Harper, or Machado. A lot of people thought they were going to get two of the three. It, we ended up finding out that it was just going to be one of those major I think pieces. you give Manny Machado $280 million, nine years, or I think they close, the, he would have signed. I think they would. I think they wanted Manny Machado, just not on, on his terms. So Manny, they wanted, defend yourself. Please. They, they <laughs> wanted him on their terms. That's yeah. why they offered the seven years, what was yep. the number, 220 or whatever it was. Which was was not seven a, years. Wasn't two, a real offer, by the it way. Was it was a real just, offer. It was, it's the only offer. E. It was not a real offer. It was just like, uh, yeah. uh, let's start this little conversation. And then I guess Manny got offended by that. And I, 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 a 100%, I don't know the man, but I know he got well, offended. When Ricky says offer. Manny now, he's talking about Machado. Machado, Machado. by the not way. Manny, yeah, yeah. Not these Manny's here. <laughs> but Manny. And Let's talk. What do you think? Let about me know Machado? off season. <laughs> so I think I think that if should, should, if that trade was on the table yeah. and Duhar and Sheffield for Jacob Degrom and, 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 and Frazier, Frazier, then you should have pulled the trigger and gotten Jacob Jacob Degrom. Then that would have opened up a spot for Manny Machado. But since they didn't make that move, there really wasn't a spot for him. You had to move one of these infielders in order to okay. slot Manny. If Machado you're Manny Machado, and, would you and have, the Yankees' offense is so potent, last three hundred that, that that wasn't the problem. The well, problem is pitching. I don't want to get in other men's pockets. Two good points. Other people's well, pockets. Like, I don't I don't know everybody's finances. You know, I'm just a guy trying to make it myself. But if you're Manny Machado, yeah. 300 Let million for San Diego or 210 for the Yankees. And you're already like no a, a millionaire you, person. You, you, you Ooh, the, you that's take, a lot of money to leave on the I'm table. Off camera. You take, that's a lot of money to leave off the table. I know. Ken Griffith, Ken Griffith Jr. left a lot of money on the table to go to Cincinnati. I'm just saying that. But... He but ninety nine percent, ninety nine percent of players do not leave money on the table. Manny Machado gets traded in three years. By the yeah. way, I predict that in yeah. three years, I think he, he doesn't. I think he, he plays fine. Out, I think he, he plays fine. Else. I think yeah. he plays fine. He's gonna be fine. Although they're saying that the that the San Diego Padres is still talking to Cleveland about trading for Kluber they can, or Trevor. They Brown. can get him if they want right now. But the problem is they don't want to. They San Diego right now they have zero pitching. That's why they. Tony Kluber, but they have a big. But they have they some have a, of the best prospects. Yeah, they have a deep Including process. Fernando Tatis yeah. Jr. They're never going to give up Fernando Tatis. Luis Arias, yeah. I would never. Francisco give up Mejia, either. most of them are Hispanic Post or Dominican, and, uh, and, and bartender. So I don't know if you if they want to give that up for pitching. You know what they should do? Like they should. You're already spending three hundred million for Manny Machado. Cheers, gentlemen. Thank you for coming through. Salud. Salud. Why don't you just sign Dallas Keuchel mm-hmm. and keep all your? Very good prospects. Well, I want to hear Manny gave two points, but I, I want him to defend his team on their approach. Do you think that's the right approach? I mean, I get it. 27 world championships, all the money in the world, the prospects in the world. Do you think that's the appropriate stance? Especially now in a, in a day and age in baseball where the guys don't want to go to free agency. The guys don't want to go to free agency. Today, uh, who was it? That yeah, uh, Chris CT's. Sale. Chris, CT, your Chris team Sale. just extended Chris Sale Chris just Sale. extended for a really long time. Yeah. Today was <clears throat> today was just the longest day that I forgot that happened today. That yeah, happened today. <laughs> Everybody's getting extensions now. And it's, it's crazy. And yeah. Who was it? Work, uh, NCAA, extensions. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Your bracket got busted already. There's never a dull... 
I didn't make a bracket. Oh. What? I, didn't, I, I always I, do I, one. This is the year that I, I was like, it's too late. I've got too many things going on. Today was a busy day, yeah. Well, yeah, man. I mean, you know. Is that the proper approach? No, no, it's not a, it's not the Yankee approach. It's not what they would have done had the boss still been around. One hundred percent believe Machado would have been a Yankee. Uh, Manny Machado that man and Bryce alive, if, and Bryce too. and Bryce Harper would have been. Harper, that that would have been alive. They should have gotten Harper. Boy, you guys, you guys think the Yankees would have had Giancarlo, Harper, and Manny? Oh, yep. three with, of those? With Stein, if George Steinbrenner was 100%. still alive, one hundred percent. I love the boss. If the boss would have been alive, one hundred. I don't know, but I don't know if that's the right move though, because again, it's it's just. It's like you're fielding uh, also in every position. Uh, in every position except for pitching, you're just you're scoring a lot of runs, but your pitching isn't. You know, you're gonna have to, to score minimum of ten yeah. runs this year to win games. Yeah, but I mean more I, than last. But year. I look at the best team in baseball, the Boston Boston Red Sox, and they're both. That's been, not the best team in baseball. They're, they're both. In my been, opinion, their bullpen opinion. took a, a big yeah. hit, and if uh, you know, last year the Yankees were. ERA wise, ahead of the Boston Red Sox, but the Red Sox slugged their way to a World Series, so we could do this. So same. let's let's talk about the Sox now. Oh, um, CT, why haven't you guys resigned Kimbra? Kimbra, why? But let's talk about it. last year. You guys are already over the tax. Everything went so. well for you guys last year. Yeah. Um, as far as Three injuries, years. like it was a almost <laughs> can, a perfect. Can we get back to? Can we get back to? <laughs> it was said? almost a what perfect he season he for he the. Said career. He said everybody career. had a career year. Not everybody, the, but some of them did. Yeah, and then you, Chris Sale, like he gets hurt, and then it's like we don't actually need him. Let him rest up, and look what happens. I, Everything went like your way, and they didn't go. They didn't have that many skids, and I think this year will kind of be similar. And that's why I feel like the Yankees gonna have to score a lot more runs this year to win games. But do you think that that's how it's gonna go down <laughs> this year? I mean, Kimbro, like, I think, pay the man. I, I would, but I think the Red Sox hands are tied with the money that they already owe to people. They haven't, but they, they've, been the, they've been the Yankees for the last. Yeah, but like, they're already over the tax right now. So exactly, like, if they pay so, Kimbro. There's no difference. Like they're yeah. not saving. I mean, they are saving yeah. because for like for every dollar you pay Kimbro, it will be like an X and yeah. X amount more. Can the owner of the Red Sox afford to sign everybody? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. rich, but he's, he's a businessman. So but they don't want to. They don't want to give away money, right? Back to last season, I think I think I mentioned it in an episode. If I didn't, let's just pretend I did because no one's gonna go back <laughs> twenty episodes ago to when I said it. But I think I said that the the key. For hey, the rest hey! Been, don't forget your diehards. You have diehards that <laughs> listen to every episode. We actually do have one. <laughs> yeah, right. But I was gonna say that uh, David Price was like the difference because everybody thought that the series was over after the Yankees beat them up in uh, in Fenway, but. David Price was able to get on. He's the a hunt. Yankee killer when he wants to be. Sometimes he, no, but he had problems in other with, playoff appearances. Uh, if I had to, if that, I had to label David Price, is that the Yankees whoop his ass every oh time? Oh my god, yeah. That's what I would say. They whoop his ass every no, time. No, no, he was big. You know who I thought was bigger in that series? And like, I think Pierce was big. Pierce was big. Joe Steve Kelly. Pierce. And, and that was Evaldi. Mi- Evaldi, Evaldi was the Red Sox like unsung hero. Former Yankee. Pierce. Here, I've you know always what? liked him. Evaldi got I don't know me why too, man. And you guys paid him. So the Red Sox did pay Evaldi. Evaldi. They rewarded him. And he saved. And in the World Series, him and Porcello, they won that World yeah. Series. And Pierce. Oh, oh, we forgot about Rick Porcello. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. To talk you. David Price, Steve Pierce, everybody was big. But I just think, like, when you look at a World Series team, there's usually two ace type of pitchers. David Price was an ace. His I, in career. the postseason, he was. In the postseason, you usually see teams. He's and it's up. like Kershaw and Greinke. Like, it's like two... So gifted pitchers, Wait, kind of. You take said Kershaw in postseason. Kershaw I mean, and Brinky, like they were when they were on the team together during the no. season, though. No, no, no. This was like years ago, a no. couple years ago. Like Kershaw because Kershaw, Kershaw, but they never won because awful of Kershaw in the playoffs. Yeah. It's like Randy Johnson well, Kershaw and Kershaw. Pitched, that's that one, though. that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, still, all right. Take a pick. <laughs> that one still stings. That one still. Stings. So what I, what, I'm, what I mean to say about David Price is that. We have Chris Sale, and then our next best pitch is supposed to be David Price. But during the regular season, even though the second half of the season he was like the David Price of old, there's a big difference between Chris, Chris Sale and David Price on any given day. But David but you were, Price, but he came through. David and, Price and came he, through, yeah, and it's like it gave us that it. it gave us that stand in ace. Yeah. While hey, forget Chris Sale and Randy Jones. I'm gonna say El Duque Hernandez and David Wells. There you go. Adrian <laughs> <laughs> Cushman. David Cohen and David Wells, 1998. Um, 
Damn, the Yankees have. Just go back to the nineties. Just so, get, get on a DeLorean. <laughs> that was my that was my favorite. That was my favorite era in baseball, man. You you look around every every like ninety was the home run race. Right? Like ninety eight, yeah, yeah, ninety nine, two thousand. It think about two thousand Yankees Mets World Series. That was huge, and that the just like all the teams that like the players were evenly spread around. It's not like the NBA. Where Benny Hack Bayani. Benny Hack Bayani. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time for the NBA though. This this season has been pretty interesting and it's weird. It's like, god awful. Well, I want to. I haven't awful. watched an NBA game. I watched one game, the first game of the Knicks <laughs> in the season. It's because the Knicks suck, and that's all you have but to you watch. Know, but you know, because so like, did you did you did you cry when they traded Porzingis? Be honest. Oh, uh, at first I was furious, <laughs> but then I looked. He demanded a trade, right? No, you had a trade. No, I looked at what was going on. I think it's I think it's a good move. I think it's actually a good move. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get two max players, and if you get Zion, you can convince Kevin Durant and Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. You, I, Kyrie, I think, is going to come for Man, sure. You you're forget, a, I, I'm a big Knicks fan. Rick knows. Rick's a big Knicks fan as well. And we can't be that confident. No, we, no. We're I don't talking know. about we're getting Zion. We're going to get LeBron in 2010. Well, we only have. So. Oh, yeah. I'm so sure that you guys are getting two we're gonna max get, players. We're going to get two no, max. No, we're going to get two max players. But I, don't, but I, I bet you it's going to be. like it, We it, were supposed to get LeBron. We ended up getting Amari Stoudemire. Exactly. It can be Kemba Walker. That, and that, that, was actually, uh-huh. that was actually like, a very good signing until we traded for Carmelo. Well, that James Dolan incident the other day doesn't help, is what I'm saying. That was it, it does not. These socially conscious players and everything that they take things to heart. It does not, yeah. but you know what I also... Hold especially, on, especially Hold well, you know Kyrie what? Irving Hold and on. Kevin Durant. I'm yeah. feeling a non mixed player. CT, what's your team in basketball? Boston Celtics. I, no, I don't like the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> oh, come what's on. Your team? Wait, wait. He, I don't, in the, in I don't the NFL, he likes the Buffalo Bills, guys. Yeah, I'm a Buffalo Bills. <laughs> well, no, you know what? I respect I'll, I'll respect that. Because I respect people. I'll, I honestly will team. respect that. But my... <laughs> NBA, I'm curious. NBA, I'm curious. NBA, I don't really have a team. That means you are a Kobe fan or a Jordan fan? Uh... Who do I think is better? No, no. Who were you a fan of? Because I'm a diehard Knicks fan since when Jordan was killing us. And every Michael Jordan I hated fan Jordan who was a fake Bulls fan, because they all left the Bulls when Jordan retired, yeah. I actually destroy all of them. And <laughs> they can all shh in front of me. Because they're not real fans. Oh, they were only fans of the GOAT. They were not fans of their team. Yeah. I had to choose. So who was your... Are you a fan of a team or you have a fan of, of your guy? I'm a fan of NBA players. So I wouldn't pick okay. a team. Okay, okay. gotcha. But if you so you're LeBron, Kobe, or Jordan? One of the three. LeBron. Well, after I would choose Jordan. Okay, okay, that's your guy. Okay, gotcha. If I had to, from everything I've seen. Okay, that's I would your guy. Choose Michael Jordan. Well, what from about now? I heard, what today? Yeah, who's your guy right now? Oh man, I like Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell's uh, good. Mitchell's good. I like. I just like. He reminds Mitchell's me of Mitchell's actually. A little bit. He's on. He's not Jordan. He's underrated. He reminds rain, me of. But him. he's underrated. He's underrated. Yeah, I like. I like Donovan Mitchell. I like. I obviously like LeBron. I just get annoyed by LeBron, but I like LeBron. He just annoys the hell out of me. I, I'm like, gonna so. LeBron. So you don't have a team right now. Still the greatest player. No, but I was gonna say that if I we agree. go back a couple years, and he just 2K, needs a closer. I would choose That's the, the Atlanta year. Hawks. Oh, okay. I would choose the Atlanta Hawks if I had to root for a team. Okay. Give me the Give me the Hawks. Don't ask why. I need to know yeah. why. You're the first to make like, in Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe, you know, I, I, Al Hoffer was they there. Just had, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dominicans. Is, is that it? I didn't it? know he was Dominican. I oh, didn't you didn't know? know? You yeah, didn't know? know? He's no, no, no. Tito Hoffer's son. Yeah. He, he's married to uh, Amelia, Amelia Vega. Vega. Amelia Vega. She yeah. was my crush yeah. growing up, so trust me. Yeah, she was great. She was great. We, you know, one of the best. One of the best players right now, Cat. He's Dominican. He's yeah, Dominican. Cat's Dominican. He's from Dominican. Jersey. He's yeah. a little annoying too, though. Like, and actually, there's a kid in the uh, for the Clippers. Shout out to the mayor, Angel Delgado. Angel Delgado. He is actually went a to meet with me. Huge beast. And we're, I can't wait for them to bring him up. I didn't know. I yeah. don't know about him. Yeah, actually. Uh, side note: well, I know we're doing the baseball podcast, but Angel Delgado, like our boy, he's on the Clippers. A beast. He's playing. He played, um, on, he played in Inwood or something. No, no. He I, played. I in think Seton he's played for Dominican Power. Yeah, so no. He's he, one of, he came actually from this guy New York. Went to Hall. I went to St. John. So, so I went to St. Hall <laughs> with Angel. Like we went at the same time. So I actually worked for the men's basketball team at the Prudential Center when uh, Angel was there in his rookie year. I was there my senior year, and he actually literally came from San Cristobal directly to St. Hall. So he was playing in DR, and he got a scholarship to go to St. Hall. Wow. Some you guys got to keep your eye. So on he that played kid. four years in St. Hall. He got drafted by the Clippers, but he got drafted late in rounds, so it wasn't guaranteed. So he was playing on their the D League on the D, on their G League team. G League, oh, that that's God. the league. And Skater that he's is sponsored. Right yeah, this guy's like wow. 30, 30, and twenty. So, but he did in a couple he, games. He made his NBA debut a few weeks ago. One day traded Tobias Harris 
to the, the 76ers. So they called him up. So he had two 10-day contracts. He had his first game in the NBA. He posted. I texted him saying congrats. So he was happy. They just sent him down to the G League. But he's going to come back. The up. first day that they sent him down, he did 40 and 20. 40 yeah. points, 20 rebounds. He's just to let him know they, that he's not going to take it easy. He's, How big is this kid? He's 6'10", 6'11". Yeah. And he's, he, he's a Very versatile. Side. He doesn't have an outside shot he yet. He has a nice... He's like... Well put together as far as frame yeah. wise, he just got to develop. But a and he was the Big East. Uh, he's the Big East uh, all time rebounder because he forever. Know. So he's good, but he has to develop an outside game. But he's very young. He's only like twenty two. So next year, hopefully, the Clippers will do the right thing and yeah. call him up to the big team. Shout out to the, the mayor and, and, and Angel Delgado. There's a couple other players too that um. There's a high school kid goes to Monsignor Scallon. His name is uh Kobe Brea. He's gonna be big too, so we we we're coming up in the basketball world. Damn. Yeah, well, I noticed wow. my my parents had a house in Santiago for a while. Yeah. we're from we're from a campo in San Jose de la Mata. Deep. But where in Santiago? Because I'm from Santiago. We're from uh, Villa Olga, right yeah. there, where right. the cancha is. So like, yeah. so that's what I was gonna say. They were yeah. in front of a the house is in front of. It's in a new development. I don't know what part of Santiago it is. Cause okay, because we're from a place called Corozo, San Jose de la Mata. It's, exactly. it's a campo like deep in the woods. But beautiful river. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful rivers. rivers yeah. yeah, but. In that new development, there was a basketball court, and I, I was always surprised to see that the basketball courts were jam packed. And yeah. like people love playing basketball. Baseball's not the sport we can. It's not just the. It, it, for us, all it's you need is a ball. Volleyball and uh, basketball behind baseball are growing huge in the art. That's actually a lot and of I'm soccer. Throw soccer in, the in there as well. So um, people figured like, yo, there's like a you little have to be major league star. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, a, not a Major League Soccer, but there's, like, a little soccer league. There's, like, the official soccer league of DR and, like, the team Shout from Santiago. Shout out to the team from Moca. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like, every team has, like, a little... And the team from Santiago, they actually play on Pucamayama, like, which is the college, the yeah. biggest college in Santiago, yeah. which I'm an, I'm an alum from. And they have, like, a beautiful state-of-the-art facility for soccer in DR. And I'm, like, I was super surprised. Last year, I went in the summer... For the first time in like 10 years. And I was Gross. so surprised to see that. That's crazy, man. Do you ever think Dominican... Back in, let's say, Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa, playing days, Pedro. Pedro's my favorite pitcher of all time, by the way. Me too. Uh, He's the greatest of all time. In my opinion... He's the greatest. He is. Pitcher? Yes. They just... Boston. Modern time. I'm a historian Boston a little bit. Up. Wait, wait, wait. All time. 1999. All time. Pedro's 99 season. It's one of the best of all greatest time. Greatest season Against, of all time. Against yeah. uh, Gibson 68. That's their era. In a steroid era, steroid, also. Yeah. People forget that. But yeah. still, no. I, no, no, but. I, I love you, Pedro. Know. For me, it's <laughs> Pedro. I love Pedro. Cool facts, too. But I also go deeper. I, I, you know, you got to respect Walter Johnson. You got to respect Sayo. Yeah. You know, Wait, nobody alive has seen that. Sayo had like 500, 500 wins. Like, yeah, 500. That's like, win. right. you know, you got to respect that. <laughs> I was going to say his name. Babe, that's like saying Babe, right? I always... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a couple of cousins. The era. My boy Ricky, like, we always talk about, obviously. Oh. We talk about Bonds, Griffey, A-Rod. We also bring in Hank Aaron or Willie Mays. And I'm the person who it's always Bonds brings up Bonds one, Babe Ruth. Mays two. You got to respect the Babe. <laughs> <laughs> you got to respect him. I re babe did his thing. You know why? The what makes me respect him is his pitching record, aside from what he did offensively and what he did with the Yankees. But he played in a completely different era. I know, man. I know, I know. But, yeah. but this, is, this is why I always look at it. Obviously, I didn't watch Babe Ruth play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, neither no, did no, I. Nobody did. So I, he, didn't, say, he did not face the, was, the best players ever. Yeah, he, I, didn't. he didn't yeah, face yeah. the best players yeah, ever. Yeah, he didn't yeah. even face the best players in the country. But the fact that he separated himself. By, by that margin. By, by that yeah, margin. Yeah, yeah. He and changed the game. If, I, I w if, if we could put Babe Ruth today when he has the training facilities, the, the time. I'm pretty sure he was like a farm boy or something. He would not. He would not. Train. He would. He still. He would make it. God. He would make it. Booze. I'm hanging you. out. No, gambling, no, no. The cigars. Babe Ruth. I'm saying that if Babe Ruth played in any era, he would still have been a Hall of Famer. Is I think. Yeah. Maybe not Babe Ruth, but still a Hall of Famer, right? I'm not saying he would have gotten six, seven hundred home runs. Yeah. So but he still would have rewrote the history books. And my other favorite player is is, is Mickey Mantle. I, w I wish I that's could have seen one. Mickey play, that's, that's and I wish he would have never well, got hurt. I, I, I wish he would have never abused alcohol. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we could have seen what. And you know, the other one is the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig. Yeah, I so, wish I could have seen Josh Gibson play because in the Negro leagues they didn't keep records and stuff. But it's rumored that he hit over eight hundred home runs. Yeah, yeah. He was a catcher. He died. Yeah, in his uh, early thirties. So this guy was like 
unbelievable. Yeah. And and in those days, they used to play. Yeah. After they play the Negro Leagues, then they would go to Mexico and play the Mexican Leagues. They play in DR. Winter ball. Yeah. You're they absolutely play. right. Yeah. They, they do. They, they compete. Actually, one, uh, if you saw the Jackie Robinson movie, 42, uh, there was multiple players that were more uh, ac- accomplished yeah. and more talented than Jackie at the time. But they had their own personal demons. Ricky was just talking about Mick. So Josh had... Some of his demons and Satchel Page, the Satchel legendary. Page, yeah. So Satchel Page one of the reasons right? he played in the he later, played later, when he was, old, when he was yeah, like forty six. Yeah, yeah. Up, but uh, one of the reasons why they picked Jackie was one, he was the youngest out of those better <laughs> players, and two was because he had the personality that could have fit with all the uh, adversity that we're gonna face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Josh <clears throat> Gibson, obviously more talented, more accomplished. He didn't have the personality that was gonna be able to right. like. Be as reserved as you needed to be, and you know you had to you know show the other cheek in order to make it at that time. Yeah. Unfortunately, but yeah, obviously there's legends of some of his home runs being the longest home runs of yeah. all time, even longer than Mickey Mantle's famous 575 foot <laughs> shot that hit the freeze in Yankee Stadium. <laughs> so you brought back the Yankees again. Good segue. Cool, yeah. Thank you. So off season. We spoke about well, how'd you feel about your Red Sox off season. We spoke about the Yanks off season. What'd you, what'd you, they, what'd you didn't do really, they didn't really do much. I this whole off you just celebrated. You just said I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I still haven't. I still haven't fully like it. It kind of hasn't sunk in yet because it's because you guys are. We just since spring training, we won the most games in spring training. Won the most games in the regular season. We only lost like twice or three times to each team. In the uh, in the postseason, and it's like once we beat the Yankees, I kind of just knew we would win, and I haven't really figured out how to just like talk shit about it yet, unless somebody I, brings it up. I think that you're you're finally the Red Sox are are morphing from the lovable losers to like what the Yankees the dynasty. Were. Can yeah. I take this opportunity to just? Can we talk about what you always do every time? Well, because well, because well, you well, guys, well, you guys better than this. this is another character. You, have, you do have a dynasty right now, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, you know? Well, hold up. It's not a dynasty. I don't know about a dynasty. You know, know. No. Some people actually do compare you guys to Think the San Antonio the... Spurs. The only reason I do not, the Spurs, they won 50 games in those NBA seasons all those years in And there were seasons where the Red Sox didn't even And then there were seasons that the Red Sox didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, we were the worst team. Well, let's talk about the But there were seasons that the Red Sox did that on purpose in order to, like, let me just real, but that's just the business in baseball. Yeah, let me so, just go ahead. Four and, rings. You want to go first before I? Do you want me to say? All right. So, <laughs> so the the rest Red Sox fans carry this this character flaw over from when they were the lovable losers. This is false. The Chicago Cubs are the lovable losers. The, yeah, but so the Red Sox the were before that. I love yeah. you guys. Um, nah, yeah, ain't losing. Pero so so and the thing is that you guys have won four World Series now in fifteen years. So let me get that out of the way. So you're not losers anymore, right? But every single time you're looking for, like a that little chip, or that's the, something like, they, oh look, they, they put us number bow. two on the rankings here. You guys are. Uh, I got him. I got him. Lord, keep on. <laughs> you got your but I think that you're finally making that transition into that. Like I can't fucking celebrate this shit because I want to win again. That's that's how that's how the Yankees are too. It's like, I mean, they hired the right manager last year. Yeah, we I love that. Win. Guy. We want to win. All right, let me right. just let me just say this: look, uh, <laughs> the Red Sox. Including last year, have won a division out three years in a row. There we, we go. We got. <laughs> okay. Talk it up. Go. Let's go. We got. <laughs> Let's go. Is this how winners talk? I wouldn't know. I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, Rick. That's how winners talk. Yeah. 2017, we lost in the first round to the Indians. We won the same amount of games as them. I think. I even think we were favored in that series. No, lost. you lost in 17. You lost to the Astros. You sure? Yeah, because the Yankees. Then the year before we lost. The Yankees. Got line, the Yankees beat the Indians. We won the both division. Both years. We won the division. And then both years, you guys lost in the playoffs. ALD, yeah. yeah. We Go had JD Martinez. We had JD Martinez in the off season, but you guys added. You guys added Giancarlo Stanton. When you guys added Giancarlo Stanton, you automatically became the best team in Here baseball next to the Astros. And not, Accor- and I, and according to who? I'm not, go back, go back, back to the podcast like, archives. No. I said I that still the Red Sox, still. when they what, added J.D. Martinez, became the in team the NC, to beat. In the NCAA tournament. In the NCAA the Yankees tournament. don't have a Chris Sales. No. Like, they don't. Let me, let, me so just that, say, let me just say this, though. In the NCAA, unfortunately. I mean, they have a Sevy who will get there. In the NCAA tournament, they rank the teams, right? If a number one team loses to a 16 seed, that's an upset. 
going into the season, I'm talking about Vegas, any website that you use to get your sports information, uh, any channel, any analyst that you use had Astros, Yankees, Cubs, uh, I think I saw LA Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers. Yeah. Red Sox were like six, seven. Not not expected to win the division. And but still be good. And then what happened throughout the season? Then what happened throughout the season? But those are not real. <laughs> okay, so in this part, those are not real baseball people, to, in my opinion. We're, hey, talking, about, we're talking about everybody. Don't disrespect that, the wise guys. That Do reports, not disrespect. I'm the just wise talking guys. about everybody that everybody that reports on baseball. Had again, a, those are not real baseball all right, all right. people. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Those are pe- I, a lot Take of people it. on ESPN. I'm like, yeah, but okay, okay, but so. Am I more expected to take advice from a guy that's been reporting on baseball for 12 years of his career or a guy down the street of the bodega that's going to tell me? The guy in the bodega? You know, all right, so okay, my uncle, take... his dad, is the guy that knows the most baseball I've ever known okay. in my life. And, and if, he, if he tells me, <laughs> if he's a guy in the bodega, if he tells me, oh, yeah, the Red Sox going with J.D. Martinez, okay. he was the one that was like, so I don't know why ESPN was like the know-it-all. Just know that. Shout out to ESPN. Just know, just By the way, can we get Presidente to sponsor? <laughs> Presidente to sponsor. Just, okay. well, welcome to the show podcast, Rick H. Show. You don't want to take Vegas odds for why, why I thought we were looked at as the underdogs? Whatever. But in the last month of baseball, the Yankees got judged back. They were starting to roll. They were. It wasn't until like we, we hadn't separated. There was still a chance for the Yankees yeah. to win the division towards the end. Yeah. Not only that, you guys beat us, I think, two out of three games at Fenway. And they had added all those pitchers, and those pitchers were performing for them. Yeah. Like, so they, the Yankees, but they also added Eovaldi, who oh, my put God. you guys up okay. yeah, over the hump. All right. But going into the end of the season, going into the end of the season, oh, after have. the All-Star break, <laughs> our bullpen had sucked. We had we had started, even Kimbrell wasn't even yeah. as automatic. He and struggled. if you guys can give me your honest opinion, what was your opinion Going into the playoffs, did you think the Yankees were in a momentum swing up, or the Red Sox were down, or vice versa? What did you think? And well, we recorded be a podcast honest, on this. Uh, yeah, but I thought, and I thought it was Houston or Boston that was going to win it. I thought, okay. yeah, same thing. But I actually I didn't thought think the, the Yankees, Yankees were, were going to beat the Red Sox. I thought well, so too. I thought but, so too. But, but, but I'm also a Yankees fan. At the so. end you know what? I was a Yankees fan. I, but I actually it. thought that I, the, I was uh, being a baseball I realist. Was okay. win at well, at the end of the season, again, Original. using all the outlets that I use and everything that I listen to with baseball, which is a lot. It's I don't know why I listen to so much of it, but it's a lot. They had the Yankees with a momentum swing because they had just beaten the Red Sox. <laughs> And everything was clicking, right? And we, so when you guys won, you guys got really bullpen, it's a different bullpen, animal in the postseason. Our bullpen was our bullpen was fucked up, but when the Yankees beat us in this game two, David Price started that game. They whooped David Price's ass. They did, yeah. Gary Sanchez hadn't done shit. Hit two home runs. Hit two home runs. Let's say right. And I'm telling you, and I'm not making this up. Nobody had the Red Sox winning another game in that season. Yeah. And, that was and by the okay. way, the, by the way, you could. And you got to be honest. When yeah. the Yankees beat David Price. You did you thought, not have the Yankees winning the series? Going I, back to Seve at home, had him pitched yet? I did not quick because question, it was Seve. Well, That's one. No, no, no. And, and you know why? And another thing is, if you go to 2004, uh, game, wow. game three, game three, Alex Rodriguez single-handedly destroyed the Red Sox. Oh, he was a beast in the beginning. The Yankees... It scored, I think, twenty something runs on that. It game. was eighteen to nine. Yeah, yeah eighteen yeah. to nine. It and was those nine were at the end, at garbage time. Yeah, and it was it was a murder, a massacre. And then they came back. And then they came back. Mm-hmm. So that's that's been the problems with the Yankees for like you the know last what? ten years. Think, quick they don't have that backbone. Do you think to, after yeah, that second to game, finish it. when the Yankees beat Price, the unfortunate it got, playing it got, of New York, New York, by, Presidente. <laughs> by Aaron Judge in the Red Sox dug like, uh, yeah, clubhouse yeah. thing. Do you think that that really spurred the Red Sox nah. to like? I don't think it did. Nah, because you know what it was? how like the media has created well, this narrative. Who wants them? I think that any. Guess, I'm, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll I gotta, take it. I gotta drive. So. I'll take it. And we. We're on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll push it. I'm the commissioner. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell I'm you that. Rick, you have I'm right. gonna tell you that the Aaron Judge playing the New York thing was random, kind of, because and he does Boston it. Some people might be crazy enough yeah. to jump his ass. Like I don't know, but so it didn't affect. He did. And he does it he after. He, he does it after every series. Every t- every time they win a game, he plays music, and it just so happens. And that moment, way, yeah. He ha- you have to walk through the. Plus, uh, oh, is this you're the in the playoffs. And you're yeah, in the high, and the Aaron, biggest rivalry. And that's not Aaron You don't Judge's, need any extra more. And that's not Aaron mean, Judge's personality. No, you know yeah, what I, mean? I didn't. I didn't make a big deal out of it. I'm actually surprised Alex Cora mentioned it at the at the parade mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, 
But the ball, the they could suck it. The only point I'm trying to make is many things I like to be. We like to be the lovable losers. I'm just you do, telling man. you. I'm we just not. telling you. I think Red Sox well, do. Well, majority, well, majority. They do look for something to be look, like. But that's and not even that. When we lost to the Astros. But being an underdog said, and being a loser is a different thing. And the Yankee fans are, are the complete opposite. The Yankee fans are. The worst like, fans. Like what world. I was about to hey, say. Hey, we are pretty. Hey. Ba- we are pretty bad fans. Some I mean, of our fans. Yeah. Like, are, well, like I was no, about to say. On their guys what I was about to say about the ALDS against the Boston Red Sox is that it took. Did it go to a game five or did you guys eliminate us in four? You, four. Guys, you guys only beat us with that David Price game. Yeah, it so it was four. in four. four. But there was that game where C- Craig Kimbrell like almost blew. It. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. That so was my, that was the clinching. That game. was the last game. What when I was Gary gonna, hit the yeah. fly ball in yeah. that field. What I was gonna say was we, been a grass we almost we almost won that game. Like Yankees fans are always like, "Fuck, man!" Like. You the stole year before, that before. That should have been us. The World you know Series. what I mean? Whereas Red Sox fans are like, no. fuck you. You thought we weren't going to do this. But I'm not. And I'm just like, just embrace your win. I'm going to tell you. But I am embracing it. Is there cursing, is is there cursing on the Rick H show? Yeah, there's right. so much cursing. Is there cursing on your show? Hell yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> we try to limit it. <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard a couple of things. I haven't heard. I didn't notice if there was much cursing. <laughs> there was more cursing. The, the game changing move oh. okay. for the Red Sox was Joe Girardi not being the Yankees manager. They were a game away from the World Series. I disagree. Uh, I, Aaron Boone makes a lot of terrible in-game decisions. I like Aaron Boone. Oh, I thought you said something else before. I thought you said that. Girardi, if Girardi would have been the manager this year, I think they would have went a little farther. I don't know. Because Girardi, no, he has a way of getting the most out of young players. Yeah. So with Andujar and Torres, he would have pushed a little harder. And he would have got more. And it's, I think Sevy would have played a lot better in the, in the postseason. But by the same token, part of the reason why Girardi left was because... Well, he didn't leave. He didn't leave. Just, they, they offered him a low ball they offer. They were like, hey, said, no. right, exactly. don't want you back. But, no, no, no. But, they, but, they, they, uh, the official sign says go. there was no oh, contract God, offer. Company, yeah, company, there was yeah. just uh, the, the contract. Mutual. It expired. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, there was but, a mutual but party. But part, part of it was how him and his players, they wanted a, a, a manager... That can manage a clubhouse for the clubhouse chemistry because of what happened between Girardi and Sanchez. And, Sanchez. and it wasn't that ga- that that Girardi did something personal to him, but Girardi was a kind. Of, Girardi's a fucking military guy. I like, think Gary needs a guy like that. He though. needs somebody like that exactly. And the so thing, and, but the thing a, is that the and game he's is changing. The heart and soul of the Yanks. Him and Didi. Let me explain. I think Didi is. Let me explain. And CC. Didi, CC, and Gary. When Gary came up. In August, it gave the Yankees a like a switch immediately. It, it just came up that same season, didn't do as well. He went back to back with Tyler Wade. But it was it was Gary, and the Yankees had this presence about them Tyler going Ross. in. It changes going, your lineup with yeah. Gary Sanchez in that lineup, you know? and that he's one of the best hitters in that lineup. So Gary. if if you're not getting what you need from him, it's a completely and by the way, he showed lineup. in the postseason that he could field his position. I think he just need. He's like one of these dudes that Man. he needs that push. Like, he's like oh, Alan, this shit. This, Alan this game Iverson, means Larry Brown. Allen Iverson, Larry no, Brown. No, no. The difference. Uh, the reason Iverson why Gary Larry is Brown. a difference maker is because you're not gonna. Uh, you know, in most MLB teams, you're not getting that big of production from a, an offense stamp. Offense from a catcher. Stamp, yeah. From a catcher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially now that you know. Uh, Salvi Perez, Wilson her. Ramos, we love you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, but besides that was a good signing. No, 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 besides Yadier Molina or Buster Posey, like who's really hitting that much yeah. as a catcher? So if the Yankees can have, I mean, there's a guy Gary in Sanchez, Philly now that's gonna be pretty. Good. Gary Sanchez and JT like, Ramuto too. Yeah, but you know the Yankees actually already done this in the past because Jorge Posada was a big exactly. reason why the Yankees had him hitting down in the lineup as a catcher. Most of the teams that they were and facing. And he was the heart and soul of the Yankees. He Not, was, it he wasn't was, Derek Jeter. It was he was the enforcer. Thank you. you. All right, I'm going to tell you like Thank this. Thank you. I'm Somebody, you like admit it. I don't think I don't think Gary Sanchez is the heart and soul of the Yankees. And I think that, well, that's a Red I Sox think that the Yankees you. are just comfortable with sacrificing. Not you don't even, It's not that you have to be an elite defender. Be a good defender, but they're sacrificing. I that. think he is an elite ball. defender. But you know that Jason Barrett like, was the hardest soul of the Red Sox, right? Yeah, yeah and, you know and you know what? And you know he was not no, as no, no. talented as ten other Red Sox. So players. another another, another offseason Sanchez. move that the Yankees made, Matt, and we're talking about uh, Gary Sanchez is an elite defender. First of all, that's one. Two. I, I think he has a great arm. Right? Wait, that's it. Wait, 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 wait. He is, and I'll explain. And to a you. good pitch framer too. So advanced stats, advanced stats. Advanced. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> press what also happened in that same offseason when you get rid of Girardi is you don't bring Tony Pena back. Ah, uh, yeah. 
And Benny. Tony with Gary, you saw something. Maybe, that's yeah, that's yeah. so that's why you saw in August, September, you saw those two months of them together. And that when he came up, everybody was talking about, oh my god, Gary's arm, the way he he frames pitches, the way he calls the game, he's learning. Yeah, no shit. You got Tony Pena, fucking he used to throw guys out from his knees. So I think that, that those were two crucial moves they made. I never thought about that. About Tony you, the, you know what? Tony, Tony, the value. Tony got offered to be the manager oh, of Triple A. Oh, he rejected yeah. it, and unfortunately, yeah. You know why? Because he should have been the manager thing. before Girardi when he interviewed thing. for the spot, and Girardi interviewed. It was Girardi it's, interview uh, Tony and Don Matt. So, but but you, Tony should have. But you had Girardi. You had Girardi's experience with the Florida Mar- Marlins. Took a no-name team to I think to the postseason. Yeah, but you go with he won't manage it again. He got fired. That was weird. Yeah. No, but let me go back to that to that uh, leader of the team thing when you said that Sanchez is the heart and soul of the team. And we talk about how Aaron Judge is soft-spoken and all this stuff. One of the things that's... He's not a wrong that's guy. Stuck, that's but, his own That's thing. true. But what stuck out to me, I went to a game in D.C. because it's way cheaper if you go anywhere else but in New York. I sat right behind the Yankee dugout. And Aaron Judge... It's the- cheaper if you want to sit behind a dugout, man. But you can <laughs> Yo. go to the uh, stadium and sit... <laughs> Such a Yo. company guy right here. No, no, I'm just saying. We <laughs> have a new special now. <laughs> Five dollar tickets. Why it, was three, why it, was, it was three twenty five last yeah. week. Why, why I got to pay $15 listen, for, listen. for a song? So I sat behind you know, the Yankee the dugout and... and Aaron Judge is the first one out of the dugout, but he doesn't take his position until everybody goes out first. And when he comes off the field, he does not go into the dugout until he shakes everybody's hand and makes sure that everybody's inside or whatever. He's Every, a nice kid. I he's, like him. He's like, a, he's like a really good leader by example, but he's not the rah-rah guy. I think that the leader of the team Cece. is Cece. Yeah. And, and I think what he did in Tampa Bay last year is the reason why. Because he was ready to throw down when he... when he, when I think Judge he gets there guy. when he's the veteran player in the clubhouse. And with Judge, too... In that in that brawl in Boston, he was the first guy out of the dugout. To Actually, I mean, like, she, she's six, what, six, seven, six, eight. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Who wants to fight? Manny right, is right. absolutely right uh, in terms of Cece Sabathia. Uh, besides what he did in Tampa, what Cece Sabathia and his foundation pitching has done behind the scenes, and they do not want the publicity. I'm not going to state everything that they've done, even for like low income and like. A immigrant families, but I want you to in, speak on it in terms of the <laughs> different things. Well, Let's one get of, on the podcast. And one of the few things actually, CC and Mr. Ryan Ruko, shout out to Ryan, yeah, R2C2, yeah. and they have a great podcast and yeah. they're pretty cool. And CC has a celebrity softball game, and every all the funds uh, raised actually, by Bronson that. was there last year. And I love that. We're gonna do that this year again. It's actually gonna be May 16th. If I that was cool. Remember. How can they I should go? they should televise that. Uh, they should actually because it is. Oh, they have interesting people. It's there. not official that's going to be televised, but they are going to do a lot, a lot of fun. Bubble. Okay, forget well, those people. And, and Kid Merrill was there last year too. How can I go? <laughs> we'll, we'll see how okay. we can get. Let's you get. There. Let's get the welcome to the show podcast. Let's, let's see if, yeah. if, if we can get the crew down there. <laughs> yeah. But what he has done off the field, some of the things in terms of like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, unfortunately, the tragedy that happened with the kid that was murdered. Uh, oh, Junior. Junior. Yeah, yeah, Junior. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. Uh, yeah, CC for that Sabathia's foundation has uh, kept an eye on that, and they're actually following up, helping with all the legal fees and stuff. Wow, That's no still way. going on. It's still not resolved. And these are things that they do not ask publicity for, that his foundation has worked pretty hard. There's a lot of things that he does, like things like that, that he actually tells the players, oh, this is how I started my foundation, doing this, doing this for the community. And some of the younger players don't have the money that CC Sabathia has. Aaron Hicks, though. But they're Aaron seeing Hicks has took in what the he's doing, and they can follow by example. So he is the... the, the and he talks about that on, on R2C2 yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, done a lot of things. He doesn't want the publicity. And he, he looks like that. the kind of guy that took his experience as a rookie. And it sounds like when you listen to his podcast... Why are we talking about another podcast on our podcast? But anyway, um, he talks about Just how... Just giving free promo. Yeah, man. How when he came up, he had a hard time, and people treated him like shit, and made him, you know, go through all the, you know, whatever the fuck you make all these rookie players go through. And he tries oh, to the make hazing, it the rookie the hazing, hazing. Oh, yeah. and he tries to make it easier. I saw Jabba Chamberlain with a pink book back. Yeah, and he tries to make it easier on on Yankee rookies, and I appreciate that. And I always like somebody who wants to make things better for the next crew coming in instead of giving them a hard time. CC's an OG in the clubhouse. He's and a, I love when, when Judge is the OG, he's going to have that type of 
uh, like you, you know, actually, a lot of people also say that Alex Rodriguez is mm-hmm. one of the best teammates, mm-hmm. and I think that that 2009, it was 2009, yeah, yeah, well, no. 2009 World Series. Like, no, he did that every year. Like after. And he took the young guys on, and he took uh, it. Gary, right. when Gary got called up the he week that Alex, was, he took him. On no, and the one thing he does, I mean, obviously, advice. Alex Rodriguez does not need any money, so everybody knows he's filthy rich. But the one thing that he does that he did when he was a Yankee, and he always did, was that he actually, when the young guys came up, he would take everybody to get custom made suits and give them like tips on how to like save money, and also give them like spending money. How can you hate him? Because a lot of the a lot of the rookies are making minimum he's wage, paid. and hey, a lot of the rookies are sending that minimum many wage reasons. after taxes. They're sending that to like DR to like their families yeah. and stuff. So well, they're not even keeping a lot. Can of I money. say a DR stat? So there's been two players that have donated the most money to the Dominican Republic. The first one is actually Pedro Martinez, not David Ortiz. I'm not surprised by that. Hey, the second one is Alex Rodriguez. Now my dad always says that because the same effect that the Red Sox Dominicans had on Dominican people. <coughs> for some reason, a lot of Dominicans hate A Rod. It's I think I think it it's, stemmed from for me the the. Him. the being born here. That the first time I so, noticed it was when, when he picked America in the WBC. Well, That's he got, when I first noticed. He got a time. check from that. So oh, it was the inauguration of that tournament, and he had to play for DR or USA. He wanted to play for DR, but he's one of the faces of baseball. You know, MLB was like, listen, yeah, listen. And then when he the next tournament, he played he for us. For Unfortunately, he had that uh, hip, hip problem. And he got to play one game. Maybe. (laughs) He got to play one game. Um, But he always said that he wanted to do it for his mom. So he wanted to play for that. And I think it's that. And it's it's I I, I don't understand the Dominican anti-hate for A-Rod. And I think it's also because he's very buttoned up. And it always looks like he's trying to say what the right thing is he's supposed to say instead of just being himself. But you know what? Dominicans, we come in all forms. So I don't understand why. Like, okay... It's true. Oh, but we hate it. We, like, like the people who are born there. Like if you're dark, you know. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah. So we but have the that. problem is okay. So, so are we any less Dominican because we were born in the states? I don't consider myself less. No. Because of that, but the problem is yes. But to some people the, who are born over there, yes, people we who are, are born and raised there, yeah, you have to be, yeah. Because we have more benefits here. Like I think as long as you know yeah. where you came from, nobody should be mad. You know exactly. that you came from But that's because that's common it. sense. You're, you're, yeah, we're talking about people that live like, over I there. Blame, like, I don't blame my elders for thinking the way that they think. I don't blame them. I yeah, can't, yeah. I can't no. them. But I try to... Yeah, I understand. You know, you're right. You're I try right. to show them, show, them, show, them the light, show them the way. Yeah, and A-Rod's great, by the way. And real quick, the Red Sox won last year. I feel like we sidetracked from that a little bit. You guys want to get back on that? No, I want to talk about <laughs> But I actually Brown, thought but... that Rick, Rick's going to move on to the Mets. Now. I am No, I'm not so, moving on to the Mets. I he's just moving want, on I, to the Mets. I, I want to talk about the offseason signings and trades. Um, I want to know what's your favorite trade of this offseason mm-hmm. and what was the best signing this offseason. That's a good question. Best signing for me was... Okay, I'm not going to say Chris Sale to the Red Sox. That's good. That's not that's right. an extension. That's, that, that benefits us. But they signed them. They, but it's an extension. It's an extension. I, I mean, you can count it. Yeah, you, you can, can count, count it. it. All right, uh, so we'll say signing or extension. Uh, and I'm going to say that Harper to the Phillies was my favorite because it's Harper, baseball's most famous. Harper player. to the Phillies. Yeah. I like that's it. actually the worst contract. And I liked signed. it. It's I actually, don't know, man, because, I liked because it. Harper, I like, I, I like analytics. I like advanced stats. I like all this stuff. Harper splits his... Stats in Citizens Bank Field are insane. All he's going to kill is, in that ballpark. All I'm going to say is that... I just think it's a bad contract for him, when personally. Harper, oh, for him. But, year-wise. But we, we, we spoke about that on our last oh, yeah. on our last podcast, the Welcome to the Show podcast. They got low ball. They got low ball, yeah. Harper, like... Harper could have gotten way more money. Yeah, and the Dodgers offered him 45 mil a year for, like, four years. Yeah, so he yeah but he didn't there. want the four years. But the problem with that I, is... I'll always take years... Upgrade. It's guaranteed money. It's AAV. guaranteed. I, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me yeah but the it. problem with that is he takes those four years. What's the guarantee that he's healthy that four exactly. years? Exactly. So, I would, so I would, that's why I like the but it's, him a 13-year deal. Money-wise, like, Something to money wise, the guy that made out with the best contract, um, let's not talk about Trout because that was like an extension. I think let's compare the two, Machado and Harper. I think it's a bad, great contract for the Phillies. There's no opt-out. There's nothing. He's your guy. If you're, he's going to move. It's because you want him to move. Um, but bad on his side 
it's a lot of years and not enough money for his value as far as the Phillies great team they got a lot of young pieces by the way John uh Gene Segura going to the Phillies is one of the biggest that was moves for me yeah um and they play in my division but they got McCutcheon so he's pretty good and and they and got David Roberts and R- Real Muto and Real Muto so um I the think are, the Phillies made out. I still think the like Braves bandits. are pretty good, though. Yeah, but I don't think the the, the Braves look at the, the Phillies starting lineup, rotation though. is. Well, I'm gonna say that Fultonevich is out, Gausman is out. They have nobody. Look <laughs> at the the Phillies made out like bandits. In Manny's side, Machado's side. Um, by the way, baseball is ridiculous. If you're gonna give a 10 year contract, you give it to a 26 year old. Yeah. Exactly. So it was one of these two guys that was gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, Manny, he gets the money, gets the years, less years. There's an opt-out clause in five years if he wants it. Um, and he controlled. He basically controls the situation for himself. So I think contract-wise, for the Phillies, it was great. For Harper, it was bad. Well, I mean, with Harper's and case. And then Trump gets with 12 Harper's years, case, you $100 million. Almost, dollars more. Well, you know, know Scott it. Boris is going to spin it, that he got the most years and this yeah. and that. You so almost, he's not going to say it was bad. He's going to say that he won. But Harper does not control his destination. No, but, but he has a full no trade, but he also has no opt out. Philly, but Philly is one of those teams that more often than not, they're going to be good. They're going to make an attempt to be good. because They're a big Philly, market team. Philly fans are crazy. Yeah. They needed the star. They they, they got the star, not only that, but he couldn't make the argument that he didn't do it for the money, and he left enough money on the table year per year that they can still go mm-hmm. out and make moves. Yeah, yeah. I so agree. I think Harper... No, they have well, a big, they were they getting, have a big they team They were deal. going to get Trout. So oh, they yeah. actually That's have money. That's another thing that when Harper... They were when going Harper to get signed, Trout. Yeah, when Harper signed, the first thing I thought was Trout and Harper. Now, if Trout comes team, over, I tell you, that's the best They just got scared, and they knew they had a podium. But it's not it's not out of it's did. not out of the question still. Even though Trout has a no trade, he gets to control where they trade him to. So two years down the line, I could see this Angels contract with with Trout turning out to be like Texas and A Rod, where two three years down Same the line, thing for man, they're boy. gonna say, "Yo, thirty six million dollars on one player, I can't go out." Nah, and... I don't think so, man. I mean, I, I mean, Artie Moreno won, has a lot of money, I think, so I, I know that Trout is the. He at the end of the day, he might end up being the greatest player that ever played baseball. No, no, I think that Manny Machado's. Contract, I saw him put that up. No, no, but I no, no, I actually that one. <laughs> he is man. No, I, res- uh, I respect the. Uh, no, I respect. I respect the. the, the you know opinion. what he is? He's. No, no, I think that Manny. He's Machado, a way better version of Jeter. Oh, with no, the no, actual no. number, as far as like what I'm saying no, is, no, 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 he's better than. You yeah. know why people love Jeter so much is the image he gave out as far as like being. Like, he's the perfect he didn't face. Have no problems. Yeah. None of that. Off the Trout is even better than yeah. that because his number. But that's are... bad for baseball. I think that's bad. I think that Trout's personality is bad for baseball. Mm. I also think. I think it's bad that he's bad. playing in LA. Going back, going back to another point that we were trying to make before about. Well, no, but before about, you finish that that yeah. point real quick, I, I respect that opinion. What I think, I think that the A Rod contract of now is Manny Machado. I think he's the one that's going to get traded in a couple of years and not. For sure. That's what my opinion. But I do understand people who have that opinion as well. But I think Manny Machado is the A-Rod who's going to get traded in three years. And not, not Trout. But I think that A-Rod was traded from Texas not because... Because they couldn't afford, afford it. it. It's because it was too much. And yeah, I think it's the same situation it. with the Angels. For the next three years, they they owe Albert Pujols and Mike Trout like $65 million. They like, like, but they just, they just Otani. finished. Otani. What is Otani going to be worth? No, no, he's not making yeah. any money. Though. Otani's no, but, not making But what is he going to be worth? But he signed time. a six-year deal, though. He signed a six-year deal. But, so he's but, in the contract for five So months. who are they? And they, but have, they, and they just finished uh, paying the five years for Josh Hamilton. So that's done. That's done, finally. So now they're just paying... Um, Albert Pujols, Trout, and Justin Upton. A lot of money. It's, it's a lot of money tied up on two players, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. You know? Yeah, yeah, by, you're right. By, yeah. by comparison, the Yankees, I know that they're still rookies, but they're paying Judge, Sanchez, and let's say Didi Gregorius are probably making less than, you know, Judge is making four six, or five million dollars. No, no, no Didi's making a little money. <laughs> but Judge because he's arbitration. No, no, but Judge, Judge, Gary. Uh, less, they're making like $1.5 million combined. You know, no, no, I'm going to give you a, a bigger stat. So Judge, Gary, Torres, Severino, and... Well, Sevi got the extension. Sevi got the extension. So between Andujar, Torres, Judge, and Sanchez, between those four, just those four, that's uh, like two point five total. Yeah. So that less than three million. That's insane. Four players. So um, that's insane. But the Red Sox are doing the same thing because they're paying uh, Xander Borgards, 
They hey, are. Rafael Devers. They are, but, but they also have people. David Price. And they do have a lot of. Chris Sale and JD Martinez. Yeah, yeah. They're going, like, back, going back to what Rick said before Trout being like Jeter. Trout. Okay, Jeter was probably the face of baseball at one point. Which no, no, he, he was, was the face of baseball for many baseball, years. Right? But he didn't have he the talent. Like, he was never the best player. In no, baseball. he wasn't. He wasn't even the maybe, best player in the maybe, Yankees. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. Trout, and you're right. Maybe he's kind of boring, but he's good at anything. I feel like if they came up with a random stat today, Trout would be good at it. You know, like he's good at any of these new stats: exit velocity. Yeah, he yeah. hits some of the furthest home runs. He yeah. plays his field. <laughs> like, like I said, I think Trout at the end of the day. He could be one of the best players that ever lived. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I meant to say by that it's that his personality is bad for baseball is, is for the reason why the NBA is taking over in popularity and and soccer is about to take o- overtake baseball is that the the sports best players are so vanilla. Like you need some drama. You need some. So you need an OBJ, but a you baseball. Need, you need exactly. Some, you need some scandals. I'm I'm sorry, but that's that's and that's what I was gonna say. Going back. The Red Sox and the Yankees are very compatible. And like you guys said, they're like a mirror image of each other. You have, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you had a guy like Pedro Martinez, who was the best pitcher in baseball. And he didn't give a fuck. He was going to go in on you. And if he hit you on the wrist, he didn't give a fuck. They don't do that anymore. Well, baseball. the problem is baseball. Now it's I got to get sport. along with this guy. because I got there's too, and, and there's too many friends and shit. The problem with baseball is, right? And you, the NBA, I think, is because of the commissioner. I think the commissioner and the NBA He's and amazing. the players... They, they they do so much for the community and they just in the US they're looked upon and you don't have lightning rods like that in the NBA there's, there's a little few ones but they're not the superstars because you think of LeBron dude open up his school in Akron I think he's a lightning rod too though he is but that's just because people well, since high school they compared him to the greatest player to yeah. ever walk this planet and you can't do that they're completely different like LeBron plays more like magic as where he can do everything, distribute, make guys better than him, but he's not a killer like Michael. He doesn't have Michael, a killer instinct. Yeah, Michael and Kobe. Kobe, I think, is the closest thing to Michael Jordan yeah. that's ever come here. Kobe went five rings in seven finals opportunities. LeBron is nine, three and nine. He needs like a deadly assassin to play along with him. He, but I have a so, kind of argument with LeBron in LeBron's defense. And again, I'm going to preface it by saying that I think LeBron is the greatest basketball player. He is on the not of all time. I think so of all time. I don't think because of all he time. could do everything at an elite level. That's why. So yeah, he could raw talent except wise. close the game. But but this is this is what I was going to say. He could he close though. He could close. LeBron. I don't he, think he, he can. closed in that finals he against loves, the Warriors. But he loves to defer and. Kyrie was the one that carried Cleveland to that championship. But the thing with the thing with LeBron is his first few championships with Cleveland, the teams were horrible. And his last few chances with, with Cleveland, those teams oh, weren't oh, that good Cleveland. either. When he went with Miami, he he, he didn't capitalize. He I had blame him for that. Wade the assassin. But that that championship he won against the Warriors, that was all LeBron James, I think. I don't I think it's cool. I think it's Kyrie. I, mean, I think Kyrie has that Mamba mentality where <laughs> Fourth quarter, he knows that it's that time. And I think LeBron, if you, I always say this, and I I love Carmelo Anthony. I always say that if Carmelo and LeBron were one guy, that he would, LeBron would have seven. Because Melo is a killer, and LeBron Melo has that instinct. But that was, but that's what killed Melo too. Is that he was a ball hog. He shot too much. He and Kobe was dude was like a forty percent shooter, less than that, thirty percent, thirty five. Yeah, but he can score from anywhere, just like Durant. And I think the year that he won the scoring title, uh, again, he for Melo is what you got around you. LeBron needs that finisher closer. With him, and LeBron, Mello, makes, LeBron makes everybody around him better. Yeah, but for Melo, you need that tough coach like Woodson, and then you need a you need everybody. veteran point guard. No, hold on, like yeah. Jason Kidd and the guys to do the dirty work. The, someone, that he's not going to do. That he's not. No, but that season when he won the scoring title, he yeah. actually played exceptional defense because his point guard Jason Kidd, who I've always loved, was like yo. No, he had Tyson You're Chandler. You're not slacking over yeah, here. Yeah, a lot of guys. Yeah. So yeah. he needs a good center, a, a veteran point guard, and a coach to go further. And even when he was with the Nuggets, like he went far because he had Chauncey Billups at yeah. that point in time. Yeah. So. But then when he had Allen Iverson, he did not. And we keep going back to the damn NBA when we're talking about baseball. I know. Mm-hmm. So wait, 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 we finally got to we the didn't even get to We didn't even get to the signing or the trade. So oh. your favorite signing, favorite oh. trade. 
Signing or extension. <laughs> what what trades happened this offseason? I can't, like I'm trying to look at the Phillies. Your Yankees made a trade. Axton, Our Mets made a trade. Axed into the Yankees. Uh, uh, either, I'll tell you the biggest trade for me. Uh, it was the. Um, Let me guess. Edwin Diaz, Robinson Cano. No, Cano's actually, easier, by the, way. the Yankees turned down. Cano's going to be number Robinson two in the Cano. MVP board in the NL the the this year. Uh, the biggest trade in the offseason that people don't talk about is Arizona sending Paul Goldschmidt oh, yeah, to yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big trade. I forgot about that. That was season. such a huge trade. And that, and that trade turned and into an extension. Sound, yeah. Yeah. He just signed an extension. Perfect fit, though, for them. Perfect yeah. for St. Louis. Six years, I think it was 150. Yeah. Not a lot of money and a great ball player, number-wise, for value. That was my, my favorite trade. Not and a lot then of money second, for baseball, it was uh, us getting Edwin Diaz and... You, you, we needed a star like Cano. But you know the Yankees turned down that a, a trade similar to that for Cano. The Yankees don't want anything to do with Robbie. I don't want Cano. What? I'm over oh Cano. Oh, my God. We have labor Robbie. Tours. They're spoiled, man. They're spoiled. Robbie. <laughs> I'll nah, see nah, you this year. No, 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 no. I said second. He's going to be in the top five in MVP voting this year. No, Cano. Robbie was Robbie was. Like, really the swing good. is still there. He was really good. And he's us, in the so, NNL. Uh, he's in the NNL. I'm always going to have love for Robbie. He's really good for us. I love I love Robinson Cano, but that's so, it. He's 35 years old. We have a nice young rookie. Well, nice, yeah. He's not a rookie anymore. Labor Torres. Yeah, sophomore. Yeah. So we're good. We're good. I think, and then my my favorite signing was the. Uh, I'm gonna say personal reasons. Manny Machado to San Diego. Yeah. I think the kid made the right decision. Are you sure? To San Diego, really? Yes. Los uh, Dominicano para San Diego. Hold on. Great weather. He's in Los <laughs> beautiful, Angeles. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. Have you been there? Nope. <laughs> my, my friend lived there for my friend lived there for a while. Beautiful city, um, great atmosphere for him and his wife. Amazing minor league system, amazing. And he's gonna be with Tatis. And then if he wants, now yo, I'm out this contract. And he's gonna get paid thirty million. So he's gonna set his his value as a. Player. I mean, it's already got paid. It's already and he, guaranteed. He is so. the guy. Not only is that, he's playing with Kinsler and Hosmer in the same means infield and then Tatis Jr. So just think about that, shout San out, Diego. Shout out to Franchi Cordero, too. I had, him on my, I had him on my team last year. He checks out a lot, but he hits bombs. Yeah, yeah we, we have fantasy. We have our fantasy draft have, tonight. Actually, actually at nine o'clock. Oh, really? My oh, bad. Really? Rick, when's our fantasy draft? Mine is on Tuesday. Okay, I actually invited go. Manny to be on the league. I don't know if I can. He handle declines. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many leagues do you have, man? One league, but it's oh. intense. Oh, okay, baseball okay. is oh, hard. Like baseball our league, is not for Our league is intense. Our league's intense. Uh, I try to like guys are up one, at two in the morning but, yeah. on like the waiver wire trying to see like yeah. oh this guy's available. Yeah. Baseball is, is every day. Uh, at it's the, not football. It's not for everybody. So it's we started the league, league, and in the first few years, our so our league has expanded. We're up to twelve teams now, and in the first few years, the draft will be like an hour. Last year, I'm, I'm like telling my wife, oh it's gonna be an hour. I'm gonna be done in an hour. These guys don't know what the fuck you were doing. there all night. It was like four hours later. I was like, el diablo, yeah, we're still picking in the fucking 25th yeah, round. These good. guys are still taking shit seriously. But how long are you giving them between picks? I think we have like a, was it 90 seconds or 60 seconds? 90 seconds. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Ours, uh, ours is 90. Yeah. 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 Like, but the, we have like. It used to be before more than that. Remember? No, because, because, was because eventually yeah. somebody goes into auto pick and then it goes quick. No, but, but we were like, everybody was drafting. our guys, I'm proud to say that. Well, I used to have Rolando. I love you, Rolando. Rolando was on my fantasy baseball thing for like three or four years. He had the first pick one year, and he got <laughs> classic story. He got Jorge Posada. Oh my god! First overall, he just went with his favorite player. He didn't favorite care. Player. He didn't and, care. He was on. And on I'll the give last you his. Year. I'll give you his second pick, Miguel Montero. Oh so my he god! Took, <laughs> he oh. took two catch. And it was an offline draft at Hooters. I think it was at Hooters. Yeah, we're live. We had a we rented out space. And he took those two guys. And guess what? Posada had a career year, and Miguel Montero had a great year. Jeez. He did not win the league. He didn't but, go anywhere, but, but but still, he he you know it wasn't a bad. So it wasn't a joke. Guys like joke. that make the draft longer. Now now the guys that <clears throat> had ten solid good baseball guys, so they know who they're going for. Not like me, you know. Last year I had Glaber, I had Okuna. But when you get to the later rounds, I had all the young guys you on my to, squad. You have to look the a little closer, and then you have to. Look. I didn't win. Though. Oh, this champions. guy got picked. Oh yeah. man, yeah, 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 the champions are made in the later rounds. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, you're gonna get, you're gonna get. Yeah, you're at the get beginning, yeah. barring injuries, not if you, you're gonna get not, something good. I drafted yeah, three not guys. Not if you have a Fuku like me, man. Barring injuries, <laughs> I had three guys that didn't play for me for 
three or four or five, maybe a month. I had Acuna and Torres. I drafted them. And I held them. And I had... He had them on his and bench. And Duhar. When, when they're not even called up. And I had... What was the other young guy? We still lost, Rick, though. I still lost. But I had all those guys on my team. Because I was like, yo, these kids are studs. And they are. But I'm not going to get them back. I and have, I have a child. I have a dark cloud surrounding me. So much so that a few years ago, I think you traded Jose what? Fernandez to me. He died. Oh, I'm for He died. Yeah. <laughs> that was it's true. not funny, but I'm no, just no, saying. No, it's not funny. That's funny. Respect, respect, actually, respect actually, Jose. Actually, well, I've been to the, in football, yeah. I have the same thing. I've been to the finals four times. He's Ask me if I won any championships. He's the Bills. Oh, you're the Bills. I'm the Buffalo. I did this year. Somebody gave me that nickname, the Buffalo Bills of fantasy football. Wow. Shout out to the Buffalo Bills. 2025, they will, they'll win the World. 25? Okay. Maybe. So Allen's not gonna. Allen's not the answer. 20 years. Okay. From now. I I thought that was your guy. Nah, man. I just, okay. That was in that. Let's movie. wait for the next QB. So uh, again, it's trades and uh, trades and signings. I, I gave mine, Manny. Who'd you have this this off season? Um, what trade you like, and what what signings you like? So I left. As he texts his wife, "Honey, I'll be home." Soon. No, man, I'm texting the guys. The draft is being delayed until yeah, nine thirty. We, we, we might have to wrap this up. Because, yeah, yeah. No, no, draft is important. We, we understand. This is we understand. If, I, if there's one crowd that understands you guys, is this one. As a biased Yankees fan, I want to say James Paxton because that's the weak- that was a good trade. That was the weakest part. That's yeah, it wasn't a signing. That was the weakest part of the Yankees team was their starting rotation. Great trade, and they. But I just told you the Degrom it. situation. Know, which please. which would you take out of the two? No, Degrom. I agree because you know why? Because if you had gotten Degrom, that would have opened up. That would have opened up third base for Manny Machado. It would have been no question. The Yankees would have given him thirty million dollars a year. But then Machado would have had all the leverage. It might have been four hundred dollars a year. Four hundred million. Okay. <laughs> Four hundred million. I don't know, man, because it looks like no other team was willing to give him that kind of money. No, I think they were. I think there was. I think he took. I think the Phillies offered him something substantial because I think the Phillies legit wanted both of them. Um, but I think he decided on San, San Diego. Diego. Well, I think he went towards that. And then my, so and I, the Giants and the White Sox offered him. Yeah. I think the Giants came in late and offered. Well, the him White a Sox lot went ahead and. and Traded for his brother-in-law, his best friend. Like they try to. The get White Sox his, have his whole family. His whole family is there, and they're and still went, there. And he went across to the. And they're still there. Yeah. No, and they so, did not actually make him an offer, but yeah, yeah, it wasn't enough. So, so they his their offer was bigger. It was less annual average value, but with incentives and stuff, it would have been. Yeah, like, it would have been three fifty. Yeah, 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 it would have yeah, been way yeah. bigger. Yeah, but it, he didn't want to work for that money though. Anyway, so hey, that, that, that was my that was my favorite trade. My favorite signing, I'm going to say, was Nolan Arenado. Extension, yeah. Staying so with the Colorado yeah. Rockies because... I hate that one. I love Nolan Arenado. I think he's one of the best players in baseball. I love him. I don't want he's him. He's underrated. Like but he kind of looks like you. Thank you. That's good. I, 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 he kind of looks like no, you. No, man, look. Uh, I don't want him on that team. I love the, the extension. Uh, it keep, it keep, defensively, he's probably the best third baseman right now. He yeah. just plays so fucking he's amazing. Hard. But his splits... He does have the core splits. That's why I love I it. Actually because looked he's, into because them. he's staying there. It, now yeah, he, yeah, but he does have them. Yeah. He does. So I know I know that the Yankees and that the Dodgers were really interested if he eventually made it. But outside of cores, he's a a star and in cores he's a Hall of Famer. So yeah, but there's but a big difference. That, something a, big a point difference. that he made, and I agree hundred percent. How many how many players have done what? How many players have had the path that Arenado has playing in cores, right? Yeah. And haven't done. And you have a guy like Larry thing. Walker. Like if you look at Larry Walker's stats, he the was guys, good in Montreal. He's still, but he was not. He, he was iconic. In I know, Colorado. but 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 how many? Again, how many, how players, many players have done what Larry Walker did in like Colorado? Trevor he's Story. a Hall of Famer. He Trevor still has Story a had a great yeah. year last year. If yeah. he continues that for his career, I gotta give him his props, even if he's just playing for Colorado. Yeah. And LeMay, Todd Helton, he Todd Helton was awesome in Colorado. Yeah, Vinny Castilla, Andres Galarraga. We can go deep with Colorado. Colorado has a They have no pitcher. They have no pitcher. Andre Bichette. Point. Dante, Dante, Dante Bouchette. They Dante have no. Bichette. His son is actually a pretty good prospect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but you can't, you can't get a good picture in that ballpark. <laughs> And, then that, and they have the humor. Marquez, Marquez. They actually but, have. But Ubaldo, Ubaldo Jimenez was actually really good. He was. was. Yeah. And Herman Marquez last year yeah. at the second half. But they always get oh, hurt or something. <laughs> super they always get hurt or something. To have a, a, a pitcher John Gray give too. you the numbers. John Gray was John Gray's yeah. nice. He's he nice. got hurt. Everybody gets hurt. And and I, the, think, I think you need sinker ball pitchers. Reliever, Mike Hampton was there for a while too. He got hurt. Sinker ball pitchers. He got hurt. The reliever the Yankees took... That was actually uh, Adam Aravino. Adam Aravino. He's oh, pretty Adam funny, actually. Good. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. He's pretty funny. So, uh, uh, E, what about you? 
Well, I got trade and signing. So underrated signing, which I wish it would have gone different. Very like low key, cheap signing was a Marlon Gonzalez to the Twins, which I would have loved. Oh, that was the a Yankees big. Or the I cannot believe and that, that guy. Is. So that is my underrated best signing of the season. I agree. Marlon Gonzalez, he could have gone to any contender, including the Astros. Could have resigned him. Red Sox, Yankees, anybody could have used him because he is so versatile. The Astros picked up a big player too. Who was it? Uh, they picked up Michael Brantley from the uh, good, Indians. Good outfield. That was outfield. The, it was such was a good underrated. signing, by the way. Yeah, that was, was an underrated player. signing. He gets hurt a lot, though, so I don't know. He gets but hurt, it's not but it's low money. outrageous money. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's... Uh... Actually, the Rockies, in, in the same vein of signings they were talking about, they picked up for low money uh, Daniel Murphy, former Met. That's a great signing. He might he might win the batting title in Colorado. In Colorado, Colorado so, he could. Yeah. so he's pretty good there. That's a good we sign. haven't gone back to the World Series because we don't have a hitter like Murphy, but we and do her. <laughs> Jeff McNeil. talking about the Mets. Oh. McNeil, McNeil's a good. Yo, we trash on the if you, if we Jeff trash McNeil. on the Mets on on our podcast. <laughs> no, no, I respect the Mets. One, a lot of my family like Rick. Jeff Mets McNeil. Fans, but no, I the, respect the, the Mets. Thing about, the thing about the Mets is. Is they're the Mets. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Nimmo is the owner. Gets salmonella poisoning because he undercooked chicken. Like yeah, that right. shit that only happens with the Mets. That's Mets. Is that the only Noah one? No Syndergaard. No Syndergaard steps up into hey, the preseason. He's like, he's like, well, I want to throw Cox- 110 this year. <laughs> you remember last season. year when well, he had <laughs> he got hurt? No Syndergaard. No, no, last no. Year, oh, last, last year. year. No, but remember last year he also had like cocksacky or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but No Syndergaard is going down again this year. You know that, right? I, I, don't think so. I love I love Noah Syndergaard, but I wish you got to see the beard. I, would, I wish he him. would leave that it looks, franchise. It looks majestic. The beard on him it looks Noah majestic. Going down. And on, yo, don't follow no, follow Noah Syndergaard on Twitter, man. He's unless funny. He, it's unless, hysterical. Unless he falls, his rivalry with Mr. Met is classic. Unless he falls on your lap, don't draft him. Right. Okay. okay. Yo, if he would just uh, be the Mets, I'll, you know who I'm gonna tell you right now that's gonna be. He's gonna Hold have on, a year like the Grom. Your favorite signing, favorite signing, favorite trade. I oh, I said it. I, oh, yeah. I, I said. Oh, yeah, it was, you said you said. I'm gonna say, say, say my favorite. Okay, CT. It was we're missing one. And, uh, CT. Real Muto. To okay, yeah, Ramuto that was a, that was that was such a good trade. And Harper man. to the Phillies, man, because okay. everybody wanted Real Muto. Yeah. Including the Mets. You were talking about the Mets. <laughs> and the I, Mets turned down Ramuto. But you know Wilson why? Wilson Ramos is, is he's good. A you know great why? Offensive catcher. That was one thing we could have had Ramos. The other thing is what they were asking. No, you could have had Ramuto. That's what he's saying. Yeah, we could have had Ramuto, yeah. but they for were. Syndergaard. You guys said no. With a team that has no leverage. Yeah, and then they, they wanted too much. Well, here and no, they wanted Rosario, and, Harper, Conforto. I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm a believer in Harper being what we think he's supposed to be. And that's why I think him going to Philly. Uh, if he doesn't good year, be, bad year. That's how I see it. Good year, bad year. If he, if he turns out to be a good year, bad year player, that's something I trade for at twenty five million a year. Like it's not that it's not going to be that big a deal. He's, five years. It depends on how and high quality 20. is the good. If his good is like two thousand fifteen, where he's he a Hall of Famer, good. He had, yeah. When he had that horrific accident, he was also on my team that year, and I. Almost cried that day. I he was. was, I was out with he, the he's also twenty six years old. <laughs> he's twenty six. The year so he's still really the young. Year, yeah. the year Aaron Judge slipped, is older than Bryce Harper. Yeah, the year that he slipped on the year that he slipped on the base and oh that was hard. Hyper extended his knee or whatever. That was last year. He was on track to. Yeah. He was almost leading an MVP. Yes. Yeah. I had Madison Bumgarner oh. when he got hurt with the damn motorcycle. Yeah. Man. I, I, I was pissed. pissed. I would have been. Pissed. I was pissed. Man. So let me tell you why I think the the Mets, and then I don't know if you guys want to wrap this up or whatever. No, no. But, after the Mets, we good. We good. Too. So this is what it is about the Mets, Rick. I'm sorry, man. I'm no, gonna, the Mets. Gonna, I, I know everything. The, the yeah. Mets are I'm like, a baseball guy. The I can Mets take are it. the Mets are uh, like a big market team that operates that plays small ball. That play that are not just small ball, but really stupid small like ball. Like if we like last Minnesota. like last year, last year you guys could have gone after JD Martinez for a contract that the Red Sox gave him. That's a completely affordable contract. Incentive laden. Instead, they go after Jay Bruce. Jay Bruce. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Mets do. And you know what? Like they always okay. go for like the best player at Jason. And I also, uh, and I also don't love the orange on blue. <laughs> well, so right. so okay, so, the Knicks, have those here we go. Though. Those are the Knicks colors. That's that's, that's the New York State flag. They, First of all, that's the what? They so, have that, that because of the Dodgers, the Dodgers and, the, and, and the Giants. And the Giants. Which no, is weird because you're paying homage to get your other own, teams that get are your own identity. You know what I'm <laughs> that's another problem with the Mets. They don't have so their own identity. The yeah. Mets black uniforms, which I loved. They, I like those. But most uh, Mets fans hate they hate those it. Uniforms. Yeah, I like. No, no, no. Most fans hate no, 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 those. No, no, no. If you ask a legit Mets fan, they'll be like, uh, "I love the black. I like the black one with the blue I like the black brim. Uniform. It was amazing. That's when we had Pedro, uh, Sandy Alderson got rid of that colorway. So that's why we were 
they reverted to this thing. The second thing is uh, certain fans, like, they fall in love with guys. I've never been a fan of Jay Bruce. I like Frazier as a clubhouse guy. Um, who was the other dude that was with the Red Sox and the Mets got? He was really good with the Red Sox. Good. Jed Lowry. Uh, Jed, not no, Jed Lowry. no, no, I know who he's leaning for. It's Jason Bay. Jason Bay. Jason Bay. Wow. So, oh, no, no. That- I'm talking about now. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was terrible. So, you know what the Jet Mets Jet Lowry mean? instead of... No, Jason Bay was good. Manny Machado. Yeah. You, you know, know what I'm saying? So, we have the money Come to on, get Machado. They were never in the Machado. <laughs> they were never in the Machado thing, but, but they're they have a big the market for. team. They, they have the money. They, they, could, have money. they, they could have gotten... Machado. Of course. They could have... No, they were never in the Machado. The Mets could have offered... Th- they were never in the discussion, but 350, no, no, 10 years, come over. No, no, no. The problem is we don't have... Omar Manai. They should have signed. Omar Manai would have gotten every Dominican. That's I don't know about that. No, no, let me explain. No, no, but they should have signed Marvin Gonzalez, who signed for a couple mil less than yeah, Jay, but Jed you're, Lowry. You're yeah. thinking, you're thinking again, like as a logical baseball saying, person, instead of like some retarded owners that we have. First oh, of all, well, one second before I forget, uh, when CT was mentioning uh, Bryce Harper. I, when Bryce Harper got signed, you know, all these little... Harper wanted to be a Met first. He didn't want to be a Met. And a Yankee. He wanted to be a Yankee or a Cub or a Dodger. And a Met. <laughs> not a Met. He loves our rotation. He does loves not. the rotation. <laughs> I don't know anybody that... Yo, I'm going to lose my train of thought. Met. No, no. My thought was when you were mentioning the, the Harper, you know, everybody posted thing, different things about Harper. And the best that I saw about Harper and the Mets was that Bryce Harper, who just signed for 13 years, right? So Bryce Harper's going to get paid by 13 years. And the Mets didn't want to go that long with him. Do you guys know that Bobby Bonilla is going to get, get paid, paid for four years more than Bryce Harper? Yeah. So, again, that just leads to my point to foolish <laughs> management oh, decisions. That's, that's a good the Bonilla one. signing was something Horrific. the owners concocted to get rid of Bobby. Right. First of all, we should never sign Bobby. Uh, if we have a guy like a like, uh, Ballsy guy like Manaya actually running the front office. Like our guy that we got now, I, I'm giving him time. Benefit of that? I am. I'm giving him time because okay. he's a player's type of guy. The and he was an agent he's before. An agent. And he Manaya, players. Manaya is there. So if Manaya and him could tell the owners, yo, have a seat. We know what the fuck we're doing. Then we're in a good position. That's the problem. I think the Wilpons, um, they run the team as if they don't have money. Yeah, you were in that Ponzi scheme. Yeah, they got their money back. Bro, but you're... First of all, David Wright has been injured for so many years. We get that his contract right back in insurance. And Yoannis. Yoannis, the last two years, back. had a couple... That money's coming back. Yeah. So you could have made... Uh, we could have had Manny Machado. Especially yeah. after the Cano trade. It's just the way the owners operate. Yeah. And the bad juju that those motherfuckers have. I don't know about Machado, but I know definitely... And I'll go way back. Jacob DeGrom should have been signed. Though. Our, yeah. our... He will be, but I think he's going to get a big extension. Our biggest mistake was not offering Jose Reyes money or a contract on his walk year and then signing David Wright for seven years. I, when I looked at both of them, yeah, Wright has the... Oh, they had a decision He's to a make. white guy... <laughs> They should have I'm gonna say it. For them. it was a race thing. He was a white guy, clean cut, nice guy. Everybody One of them was gonna him. be the face of the franchise, he, and the other was gonna walk. First of all, you build the ballpark for Jose, not for David, but you sign Ho- David yeah, like for eight does, years. And how the fuck does that make sense? A city field is built for Jose Reyes to get doubles, triples everywhere. Yeah. All those little nook and crammies were for him. So you sign. This guy, seven years, don't even offer Jose any money. Guess what? He goes to Miami. And Jose went down because he went to... Mentally, he was like... In a he was place. not... If he would have been a Met all those years, his numbers would have been way better. Yeah. Way better. So I would have kept Jose, negotiated with David if he didn't want... Because you needed to keep them both. I think splitting them up was a mistake. And keeping David was the biggest mistake. First of all, his numbers in that stadium are not great. Mm. And he's not that good of a ball player. I'm sorry, Mets uh, fans. I'm sorry, Mets fans. He's a great fans. guy, though. He's a great guy. He's a good guy, guy in person. That's great. <laughs> There's a lot of good guys in person. But he's I, he's not the guy I want leading my team. No. No. I respect that. Not a rah-rah guy. Not a guy people rally around. Um, He doesn't have control of the uh, locker room. 
it, it, it's just a bad business and baseball decision. No, no, to it's tough to be the leader of men when you're always hurt too. Like the other players are like, "What is this?" Guy yeah, but even when he wasn't hurt, so when he he's was... hurt so much, he can't command the room and like tell them, "Guys, do we this." We made a trade for you, Andy Cespedes. Yeah, 2015. A great trade for that. That well, guy comes. The extension was bad though. This is my really bad. The extent? <clears throat> no, no, it wasn't bad. Yeah. If the Mets don't re-sign that man, you guys all hell crazy. break loose. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. So. He comes in, he demands... The, it was his team, yeah, but it was the, not Davis The front team. office actually also, like... You're saying that the Mets don't do nothing, but their front office actually... They don't do shit. They listen a lot to the yeah. actual public has to say. They don't do shit. No, they don't, they don't listen to the public. They, 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 they always get weird they don't listen about to that. No, not one offer to Bryce Harper, not one offer to Machado. And guess what? You're going to have to suck that Bryce Harper cock for 13 years. Damn. Because he's going to... Philly's Mets going to play each other a lot, and they're going to see him... A lot. The same amount when he was a national. Why not have the guy on your team? Yeah, man. Just join us. Yeah. Oh. No. Damn. Yeah, no, no, no. You, get I, you know, I can't do that. The, the new, the you know new evil empire? You know why I can't you know do that? You know that's the new evil empire. Although I, I've never been Wait, a Yankee take, fan. Don't take that away from No, no. That's the Golden State Warriors <laughs> of baseball. O- although I've never <laughs> been a Yankee, Yankee fan, anymore. I will never root for a Red. I actually went to Boston. I wore my Mets hat. And they didn't say nothing to me because it was Mets hat. But although I'm not a Yankee fan, I can't cheer for Boston in any sport just because of the rivalry they have with the Yankees. And the Knicks. And the Knicks. And everything else. And the Patriots. And everything. And everything. And the Patriots. And... No, the Patriots is not a rivalry. No, no, no. Because we own them, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. Two rings, baby. <laughs> Brady, if you don't remember, I got the tapes. I'll send them. <laughs> well. It was a good show. Manny was only going to be here for an hour. I mean, hour 38 minutes. Yeah, man. Our bad, man. We just got into it. That's and I know, I know you guys have a big, a big event tonight. Big we got, event. We got to do, do, do this again when there is. We have to do yeah, another no time a life or death situation. No, during the and season, then, you know, we'll, something we'll do a bigger production. I'll have the cameras and everything here. And yeah. maybe well, who knows? Maybe we can do something on location. Maybe somewhere. have a ball player yeah. guest appearance. Won't yeah. be the last Danny time. Monte, Delta Danny Suites. Monte, do it in the Delta Danny, Suites. <laughs> Maybe Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> that guy has an amazing story. Yeah, Ricky's pretty cool. So, yo, thank you guys for tuning in. And the audio people that are listening to me, I'm looking at the phone and everything. I want to thank Manny because uh, he started his podcast. I always had an idea for a podcast. He doesn't know this shit. I had one be- way before he started an idea for it. His. He did his. And I was like, yo... He's doing his thing, man. And I was talking to my brother and Paul for a long time. Like, yo, we need to do something, not just sports, but like, l- listen to this. They're doing the, 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 the thing the right way. And then we finally, like, somebody was like, yo, just do it. Stop talking about it and just, just do it. Do we it, did yeah. it. And because of their podcast, our podcast grew. And that's why, you know, that's why I did the podcast. Cool. I had an idea for it. You did yours, and it just like yo, Manny could do it. I could do one too. So. Yeah, no, man. we respect so, it. Like, you, and, thank you guys again for coming. I've always been up. a supporter of the Welcome to the Show podcast. Nice. Um, so we, we have to do more. No, yeah, we, let's do this again, man. Yeah. We love the fact yeah. Welcome to the Show. Incarnation class of '98. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Dominican is doing our thing, say? baby. Latino. Uh, <laughs> anything else to say? Besides the Red Sox are the World Series champions. We know that. No, nah, I just want to say this. This. Felt like a very good natural conversation. Conversation, and we should definitely do it again. Thank you, man. Thank and you. good luck in your fantasy season. Oh, good luck in your draft. Good luck to you. My draft, draft is tonight. on Tuesday, so good Thank luck you. in your draft. Yeah. As soon as we get in the car, I gotta delay this draft by half hour. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to play like PR for like another. Thank hour. you for watching. <laughs> Peace.